Okay. We had this conversation last month. I think we did. Sorry, I'm a little frazzled. So it was a lot easier when I drove two blocks to get here and not across town. All right. Anybody have any issues with the minutes from last month? Minutes look okay. All right. Minutes are good. Yeah. We'll move into run through these easy ones quickly. All right. Case number one. Nelson Hernandez. One room administrative office for his masonry business. It should be um, pretty easy, normal questions of supplies and inventory and equipment. And Just the owner of the house being aware. All right, anybody got anything on that one? No. If I go too fast, y'all tell me, but some of these are just normal. Case number two, administrative office or website online selling only and then stuff it looks like um, questions all look good this inventory will be the biggest thing but mm -hmm. all of those things can fit in one room pretty easily all right. historically y'all have asked about for the drop from where she's coming or whether she's going to have a big inventory and in her house coming in and out because, because that would take more than a room and you also uh, don't want if she's got inventory there it's going to be easy to try to get people to come there to buy so. okay case number three office for say admin sales Offline for crafts. I think she means online for crafts. Yeah, the uh, she's got on, on. Oh, is it? Oh, it is changing. Page yeah. eight says online. Okay. Yeah. That will be the same thing. What kind of crafts is she selling? Where's she keeping her inventory? What's she? How's she getting her orders? <coughs> so four. Do you have anything on that one? Number, four. number three. Oh. At some point the numbers get off, but I don't think we're there yet. All right, case number four. Cookie business. Yeah, it's like cottage law. Included our health department notice. She's going to have special, taking special orders for customers, but how does she deliver? For a minute, I thought she was going to be taking cookies or something. That is what she Yeah, she's, she's making, making them. them. Yeah. So she doesn't have to have a professional kitchen? No. Uh, there is a special provision in the state law that allows... No? It's weird stuff like you can't have eggs or dairy yeah. products in it. Cottage food. Yes, yeah. yeah. And you well, can, I call it cottage cheese law. Yeah. <laughs> you can cottage no cheese law. Yeah. 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 Eggs, it's basically it's got to be. Uh, well, how do you make cookies without uh, well, I mean, eggs? It's, uh, it can be other things. It too. can be it can be baked goods, but it can't have what the end product can't be like need to be refrigerated or something. Right. If you look in the okay. back of the yes. zone and look in my zoning book there, there, I got a copy of it in there. It's it's different products. Right. In the zoning book. Zoning so basically book. it's bake sale food. Yeah. Bake sale food and they they have to take it off site to sell to, to sell it. They right. can't sell it there. And there's other provisions, and, they, and I think the health department has to check it, but the it's not to the same degree as a. Yeah. A, it's uh, only foods that can be sold directly to consumers under the cottage food law. It says baked goods, cakes, cookies, pastries, donuts, dainties, bread, candies, jellies, and jams, dried herbs, dried herb mixes. It says uh, you can't do cheesecakes, or custard pies, or juices, or fruits, milk products. Harder soft cheeses, pickles, barbecue sauces, canned foods, garlic, meats in any form, low acid food. So, Pedro, you want 
Did I? It's not in here. It's just so. blue. Oh, okay. Do y'all remember right that they, just, they can't use the big uh, commercial oven and stuff like that, or is that just something we had a discussion about one time? I think we just said as long as it's not a commercial kitchen setup. Right. That they're, you know, they're not running a commercial kitchen exclusively out of the home. They're actually living in the home. Right. Well, they can use their residential equipment to do yeah. this. Right. They don't have to have commercial. Right. But they could. They could. I was thinking that we had told them one time they could, but I don't think. Oh, it says right. it, it does say it says food sales cannot exceed twenty thousand a year. Hmm. So it's strictly a small business operation. Who monitors that though? Department of Revenue. Who monitors that. <laughs> Well, that's true. Yeah, they're going to say, oh, you made too much money and paid us too many taxes. Quit selling cookies. The department that's all under is the Department of Agriculture and Industries. That's where this law comes from. Mm -hmm. She has her health department stuff. Right. Through 2023. So, as far as I can tell, we're good with this. It meets, mm -hmm. it meets all the requirements. Again, so no customers. I mean, the same rules apply, right? Right. We're, okay. No employees. No customers, no employees. Everything's got to be off-site. All right, now I get to the fun one. And this is in my neighborhood, so do I recuse myself from this? No. I'd okay. rather not because the people that are all up in arms get all up in arms over everything in my neighborhood. The only way you have to recuse is if you don't feel like you can be unbiased okay. or if you have a financial interest in the business. Okay. No, it's on the back street. And I rode by, I didn't, not that it concerns us, but I didn't see this big, huge building that they say he put in his backyard. Um, and he shares a driveway with the neighbors. I mean, it's a, it's a one driveway going to both houses, so. Yeah, when they poured it, they just poured it all together. I mean, it's got a seam. Okay, yeah, they just decided to put them on the same side. But they're on the same side, yeah. so. Um, um. There are three. Home occupancy, even though they say the covenant forbids it. Those of us that moved in didn't even know there was a covenant in the neighborhood, so, you know. One of them's mine, is the home occupation. Now, well, which the, one are we looking at, number five? Number five. The music, it's one of those music things that if it's, if it's legitimately just where you keep the books, then that might be something that will be allowed to. But if he's using the building there, if he's doing the recording, coming there to mix it and they're doing you know stuff like that then it wouldn't right but don't okay. we have these uh statements that have been mailed to us that seem to be an affidavit that says that that's what they hear yeah, that, that music is sampling is going on there at the at the Absolutely. at the facility yes yeah, and that's what i'm saying if, and so as a practical matter if it's if it's just what he's asking for that's a fact if y'all believe he's doing music there, which from those it appears that he is, then he can't do that. It's not the nature of the business as much as it is. Right, he can't have people coming in to record it. Right, and he can't, that, all that can't happen. But, but all of that per these affidavits seems to be happening. Right, right. and that's for y'all to decide. Okay. I'm not advocating for him. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying that that's what you would look at. Even though he answered number two saying there's no sounds well, this doesn't um, produce any sounds. But do we know if he's playing his own personal music or if people are coming? If yeah. you're next door to yeah. me and I'm in yeah. my pool, you're going to say there's loud music playing. Of course, yeah. I go to bed early and it's not all night. So okay. how do we, how, I mean, do we just trust him to tell the truth? Well, I mean, you're, you're, you've got evidence, you know, based on what he's saying. You've got evidence based on what the neighbor is. Right. So, I mean, they say there's loud music playing. They don't. I've also heard he has a band. Um, <laughs> again, well, all of this discussion. nonsense, though, about the covenant in my neighborhood is not. I mean, there's a covenant, but it's Co not. We don't enforce covenants. Right. We don't enforce covenants. And, it, and, yeah. and it's, it's like everything else. If you know there's a business going on there, we don't allow it. Right. And so, um, <coughs> you know, the, the argument then is, well, do these people. They're hearing something. So is that a is that the business going on, or is that something else? Um, and the Boza is the conscience 
of the city for things like you know they do they you all look at it and say you know i believe the the community can deal with that being there or they can't and then, so it, it's up to y'all to decide that kind of stuff now if he is recording music somewhere else can he mix that music at home forget the forget what it sounds like is going up right. to say he says right. i'm recording if it running, if he's got him up Apple laptop running Logic Pro, and he's just mixing that music at his home, and it's not, he hasn't got him a large speaker system that's blaring out to the neighborhood, then it's just basically computer work. Right. If he doesn't have bands coming over to his house. So he could do music production there, if that's truly that's all. We did, have that, we did have this same situation over off of, uh, I'll say it's Canterbury, back off of Old Monk Road, that little neighborhood was off of. Uh, it's between Red Sunset or no, Sunset. No, no, no. Or no it's, it's, before, it's before you cross the belt line. It's like right oh, here yeah. off second. Yeah. And then you go down second a little bit, and there's a little side street, and it's Canterbury. It's not. Yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. There's a little neighborhood. The guy actually wanted to have a sound studio there, have bands come over, yeah. and he was going to cut tracks there. And of course, we, the board denied him that because he had already built the studio in his backyard. And cut tracks. Well, I think that and sounds it, like what this guy has and, done. And, and this even if he does have this little building and it is you know powered and everything he's not supposed to be able to do that operation in that little shed he's supposed to be doing inside one room of the main residence that's true for several reasons there's the nuisance value of the noise getting out which is in violation of this another thing is a band coming over is several cars coming in and going and working to all hour and you know and all that that makes it a lot of business. evidence of a business right I have a question. His next door neighbor. There's lots. Well, the, well, the next door neighbor uh, saw fit to write a letter uh, to the board right. to share with us uh, what the next door neighbors are witnessing. So, if anyone notices anything, I think it would be the next door neighbor. And as we have shared, uh, no one is supposed to know whether or not you're running a business there right. or not. And if your next door neighbor seems to indicate that you are running a business which we or, say you should not or the next door neighbor thinks that they know and that's <laughs> i guess what i'm suggesting is the pool with the radio i mean i've had neighbors if they had to say something good or bad about me i guess i'm leery about so much trust in neighbors but if, if you're telling me it's quite a few then, then that does that that changes my mind so I, so <clears throat> So suppose his little studio was soundproof, but and 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 the volume was not penetrating past the little shed of her. Would he still have a problem? He still would have a problem okay. because if you have a studio, that means that people will he be coming to your place of business, mm -hmm. which is what we share. My understanding here at this particular place is that if you have traffic, you cannot. Oh, you are not allowed traffic to your home to conduct your business. And, and that neighborhood would not be zoned to have a studio, that kind of business. It's zoned residential, and the only thing they can have is an administrative office in it, not in one room. whether it's music or any <coughs> other business. If it's, if it's not just the one room and administrative activities only, and it's going to be a problem, but it's more problem here. Yeah, well, the question or is, there's more traffic or whatever. What if, and I'm playing devil's advocate on all this, That's what, I was doing. what if he says, I have a band and they practice in my garage and that has nothing to do with the music production business? I mean, that's a noise issue where you call the police, is it not? Right. But it has nothing to do with it's not a business, and he's trying to, so that, that would make the difference. Because if it's just the fam, you know, the family, you know, the Osmonds, and they're, you know, so they're doing their band in the thing. <laughs> That's the only family musical I can think of. So they're out there and they're practicing in the garage. That's what, but if, you know, you're coming over there to record, and this is not just for his church or his right. Church, this is a. He's trying to come up with all of the different things he may say to this. Because he's asked for one room. For administration, well, the one room music can't production. be in a detached 
Well, and I don't know that it is. I just, that's, you know, they all kind of went off on tangents of all the things he's done that really aren't relevant to. I also know some of these people. And I'll leave it at that. I do not know Mr. Strong. I know him. You do know him? Oh, yeah. So in your neighborhood, uh, you all... It, it, your neighborhood seems to have a history of people uh, getting the other neighbors to sign a petition. You all do that pretty regularly? Now, you all, you notice, there's one... You said your neighborhood... Oh, well, no, it is my neighborhood. I'm going by my name's not on that, and they know better than to ask me. Sure. Um, <laughs> my neighborhood is filled with people that have lived there a really long time that are opposed to... Anybody new coming in the Yes. Yeah, um, opposed to businesses, like you said, the covenant forbids it, but nobody that moves in knows we have a covenant. Apparently there have been other business requests in my neighborhood that got turned down or got shut down by the neighborhood. Um, we don't have an HOA, I mean it's just a normal 1980s neighborhood, but yes. I think we just ask him and let him explain exactly yeah, what he's doing and because what he's asking for is allowed. What he's doing may not fall under right. is the way I read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I did ride by him like I said I he's on the back street which backs up to the woods. Um, there are woods in between him and the neighbor on the side and I couldn't tell where there was another building other than the garage that was built when the house was built. Okay. All right, case number six. Operation of a new whiskey brand and label. ABC board's already approved. Um, what does this fall under? Hmm. This is not a cottage. Is that six? No, it should be. Well, sure. I, I, must, I didn't change it in the book, but it should be. We moved that one to case nine. I thought that was case nine. Yeah, so six okay. could be on Mr. Lee. Yeah, but which one are we going to talk about? Mr. Lee? I'll... All right, let's. Let's pull six. Yes, okay. Six goes. Six is the DJ. Yes. Thank you. All right, I had. All right, five is the DJ. Okay, so now we're on the new six, which shows a seven. Can I Lee? Room, one room for. Administrator used for DJ Rock Entertainment. Right. Normal questions, we're assuming he's doing this off site. Not DJing in his backyard. Uh, property owner is different. Am I having questions on this one? Which, what is the. Uh Case number on seven, page on, thirty. Okay. In your packet, I pulled my my case out. Right. Okay. So DJ K Rock Entertainment. That's just someone who's going to be a DJ and do work weddings and those kind of things like that. That's I what so. I understand that to be. Right. Okay. So, so this one seems like normal questions of making sure he's going somewhere else to do his, his sure. work. All right. Case number seven, which is page 33 in y'all's book. Same color. Administration use for Lee's Preservation Service. Whatever that is. Yeah. That's not unusual. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's just the dedication of one room. Right. Does anyone have a question what a preservation business is? Yeah, we need to ask him to describe that. Okay. I, I kind of, I, with, with the person being a DJ, I took this to mean 
that it is someone who's going to transfer uh, VHS tapes to DVDs where you're preserving some of your family history, family music. Also, if you're doing things electronically, taking old pictures and putting them on CDs. It's what I thought, but I we will see. I, I thought it bombed. <laughs> I was thinking, taxidermy. Yeah, I was thinking, how do you go from being a disc jockey to a taxidermist? I like yours a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's what I thought it was. Like. Right. It's good to know that well, I went that way, you all went somewhere else. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. Right. Well, we're just Obviously, we need to understand what that one is before sure. we can ask him all the other questions. All right. All right. And that would mean the same thing if. If he's doing that, then meaning the thing that I described, then the people would need to either mail it to him or he would have to go to their place to pick it up because we cannot quote, here are my disc at your home, and then he takes it away like that. So we'll make sure of that. Understood? All right. Case number now nine, page 27. No, number eight. Oh. Eight. This one's eight. Jasmine. All right. Yes. Page thirty-six. Yes. Page thirty-six. Hey, did you did you rewrite this in the book? Good, good. I'm following the book. Okay. Are you talking about y'all's special book? No, no, the the one that she's got on Lane Drive. Yeah. Did you, you didn't read, read. I was wondering because that's how I did the slideshows. I didn't. Even, I just looked out through there and did it. I'm gonna be out of order, but I'll keep up. I did not change it. I don't believe. Okay. Yep. Yours is in order. I think Chips is in the right order. Yours is in order. What do you have down for case number six? Stephen Page. No, please. No. Yeah, we moved. Yeah, that's what I have. Stephen Page should be nine. We're on eight, though. All right, we're, we're on eight, eight yeah. which is page 36 in our books. Well, page 36 is nine in mine. Yeah, so, they changed them around. They moved them a little bit. It's now number eight. I unstapled mine so I can get them in the right, I need to do that. right order. All right, so Jasmine Sharpley, one room for athletic clothing and accessories online business. Uh -huh. Same, Same question. Same question. Yeah. Drop shipping and inventory. Yeah, normal shipping. All right. Case number nine, Stephen Pate. Oh, here's the other one. Oh. This actually works. Yeah, we're just kind of working. Hey, you're welcome, Ben. Yeah. You're welcome to stay with you. We're just going to talk about you though, and yeah, you can't talk back yet. So. No, we had to. We moved today. All right. So this is not a cottage business. No. Explain this with Bob. Uh, he's going to have a whiskey bottle. He's going to get a barrels from a distiller. Then it's determined to bottle that whiskey at his own at label and then sell it not so. He can so a devil's cut. Hmm? The devil's cut, he can drain the barrels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but okay, so from what I'm in, from what I interpret here, uh, as you have shared, uh, you're gonna run a steel no, no, in a no, neighborhood. He's gonna have somebody distill it. Somebody else is going to produce the, the alcohol. They okay. That shit to his home. Okay, let me make sure that I'm following then because what my interpretation of number six is uh, that the person is, uh, is going to, uh, to operations of new whiskey and brand label and bourbon will be stored and bottled on property, okay? Right. The key word here is stored. Right. All right. But not made. Huh? Not made on property. Not, made, not distilled on property. Okay, not distilled on property, but just made on the property. I mean, uh, stored on the property. Stored, it says bottled Re on property. 
It says bottle. Okay, bottle meaning, okay, so you, we got whiskey barrels uh, coming there and there's gonna have enough room at the place to store it. Now, with this stuff being flammable, because I know we've all seen the video of the big fire that they had up there in Kentucky where one of those big distillers lost several buildings, because once this stuff gets lit, it's gone. And you know we have lightning and things like that. So with that kind of thing, that's a, that's a danger to those other neighbors who live there. You know, so how do you make sure that you don't have any uh, fire like that? Because if you're storing, of course, obviously, for this to be, I wonder what the business model is going to be because I wonder how many barrels of whiskey are you talking about storing there that you're gonna wind up trying to sell. And then when you're talking about trying to sell these numbers of barrels, how are you gonna do all of that? Uh, so that's gonna be a, and but that's gonna be you a, and a I could person. have whiskey, bottle, or whiskey barrels of bourbons at our house. We, we certainly can, but I would think that if we were doing it, that we would not have a volume that we would think that we would be trying to become profitable. Okay, I would think that whatever your business model is, it should share with you how many barrels you're going to have. Okay, so that's going to be a question to share with us, just how large of an area are we talking about? And then again, uh, the assurances for the neighborhood, because um, one fire, uh, and you know, we all, I know our homes have a little bit of distance between them, but surely uh, that's a hazard that I'm, I would be hesitant on, okay? Let but me, as you let see. Me, let me say one thing. Sure. There's two on here that are, um, are appeals of administrative decisions, right. which are different right. from use permitted on appeal. A use permitted on appeal is something that's allowed in the neighborhood, but it, but it has to come through y'all first to make sure that it meets all the criteria of not disrupting the neighborhood. Okay. These are kind of like judicial appeals from decision. The building department made the decision that this can't bump, this can't exist in this Can or cannot? Cannot okay, exist thanks. in this neighborhood. Okay. where it is because of the zoning, because of the neighborhood, for whatever reason. So what y'all are tasked to do in those cases are to say whether the building department applied the law wrong, applied their decision wrong, and came to a wrong decision, and you're going to overrule the building department and let them have the business. Okay. So it, it's a different premise from the use permitted on appeal. Okay, so with that being, with that being shared, so our building uh, department and of Bob the city. Will be able to tell you how yeah. We need to just basically off the zoning ordinance. The zoning ordinance says, you know, you can't have a business of this type. You cannot have a no, business. No, not in the, not, it, it's, it's, all you can have is home occupations. Understood. We don't consider these to be home occupations because it's actually a man or a bottling process. Production for manufacturing in a, facility. In a mm -hmm. industrial zone. Sure. Yeah, you're or making an industrial zone, zone into so, a residential so zone. So at that point, we can't say, okay, you can do it. But he has a right to appeal it to you. And, and which is what this board is. Right. right. Understood. Yep. All right. That's what we will ask. Yep. Have we lots of questions on that one? Yeah. Yep. Well, I have some questions. Okay. Just, 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 no, I, that's, that's just that's, me. That's, all right. Well, Case we're number 10, which is actually still number 10. I think we're back on uh, 39. Tom and Lynn Coleman. Um, looking for a setback variance to build their garage. Historic in the historic neighborhood. neighborhood. Yeah. It's a pretty pretty house picture. Yep. Yeah. Look like it'd be an improvement for that area too. Garage is on the back of the house, so this is a rear setback variance. Yeah, it looked like it's right next to the alley. That's what I was able to do. We've had these before. Mm -hmm. so, now these houses predate the zoning, I guess, don't they? Yeah. I think so, but I'm not certain. Yeah. Yeah, she says the house already exceeds the setback parameters. Right. So it's grandfathered. The house will be grandfathered, but the garage, the garage will not. The new construction, but... But with the garage being attached to the house, 
because that's what the the view on 42 shows that you're know, trying to get an attachment to the house and stuff like that. So. To me, it's an improvement to a house. Mm -hmm. It adds to the value to have a garage. It certainly does. So you may right. maintain the historic look. Mm -hmm. All right, case number the 11. Lake, the lake, uh, Caroline here, she can answer your questions. All oh, right. there's our oh. historical lady. Our historical lady? So are there requirements that they have to? Sure. <laughs> the, I don't know the plan that y'all have been submitted. The last one that came in front of the commission in November showed the standard two car garage with a breezeway attaching and the commission would not approve it. Um, they had a long list of concerns, one being the size of the garage. It, looked, it appeared to be taking up most of the backyard. Mm -hmm. And another concern was how you can access that garage there's a pretty substantial grade differential between the alley and the house. So there was a lot of question about how much concrete pour is this viable, you know. So the last discussion they had with the commission was they wanted to see more details and the homeowners had told the commission they would look at either a carport or a one car garage. Um, and that's what we had been told. And then they tried to resubmit a two car garage. They tried to resubmit the same paperwork again. So the commission has not seen it again. They have been told that you know, they're still resubmitting the same thing that the commission said that in November. How this will play out for the commission, I don't know. They're not on the docket yet. Um, but those were the commission's concerns. So it wasn't so much can they have a garage there. The question right. was, is the size appropriate? Can it attach to the house? The commission is sort of implying they don't typically allow that. I mean, you all know how it is. You can find anything in the old neighborhoods. Got decades worth of people doing stuff, but from the commission's perspective, there was concern um, about that. So, if we grant the variance, it still would have to go through the commission, it correct? Still would have to go through the commission. Yeah, right. We would just be granting the variance based on setbacks to have a structure yeah. in correct. the backyard. And then the historical commission would still have to approve the actual plan. Okay. okay, that makes sense to everybody. That makes it easy. Yeah, that. that <laughs> Yeah. So basically, we could say yes. You could have a garage, and, and it's still, yeah. I mean, the discussion is going to have to come to us first, and we approve it, and then y'all say yes or no on the no, no, on the, the variance. You know, who, who who says yes or no first? And so finally, the discussion I had with the commission was if it goes to y'all first, the same way it would anyone else in the city, and then we are more specialized, and then we come in behind that. And so y'all sort of look at it on: Do we only allow this? You know, would we allow what are restrictions? And then after it goes to y'all, then I have my commission look at it and say, okay, now we get more specific. Right. Okay. We just say the stru a structure is allowed, and then y'all. Yeah. And if y'all have certain footprints or setbacks, you know, make sure that's in there so that my commission knows what they have to work with. So, is, do we think that this is the one that was submitted before and denied, or it looks like file, it. filing the new one with y'all to death? So they told them to focus on the house because there was great concern that the house might come down. And, and so their concern was, you know, please focus on stabilizing the house until we come back to the garage. They have not come back in front of the commission of the garage. The last thing I saw was the same set of plans. And then oh, okay. They had okay. A discussion with them Which is what this looks like. Yeah. This looks like the two floor. a different set of plans. My question is going to be whether. Do they still want this? Uh, what, so. I, I don't know. That discussion has been each email a little bit. Yes. So. Case number 11. And Zane Maddox. Looking for a. Those of y'all that have come in, this is just the pre-meeting. Oh, okay. It's just so we're, we're so don't think you've been bypassed and skipped. This is just where we go through and chat amongst ourselves. It's a six to eight foot fire. Very. Mm -hmm. Please play. Now this variance. Is this variance that the? 
they have a limit on how tall the house can be? Yep, it's 35 feet. 35 feet or that's, two that's, and a half Well, it's from, it's from grade. We've, we've run into this lately. The, the taller, it seems like everybody's going to a taller house, even though you may not actually have living space in that <coughs> part of the house that's actually reaching to those heights. It may just be empty attic space. Mm -hmm. But everybody likes to have those big, tall, high-pitched roofs. So we've run into this, and we finally developed the idea of where to start measuring from on the, you know, is it the base plate, is it ground level? We started at the base plate. So wherever the base plate is, and then we measure up to the next story, to the next story, and then that's that's where we start. So so this one is gonna be six foot eight. Now it's whether it's gonna cause any strength anywhere, I'm not real sure. Most of the time there's lots of trees around. It's, it's not a big thing. It's just a new style of houses that, mm -hmm. that when the ordinance was written in 1956, nobody built that style house. As you can see, you know, older neighborhoods, they all got that real low pitch road. You know, not a lot of attic space except for some of the generally older homes. You know, they're over in Old Decatur where they've got large attics. You know, now we're kind of coming back around, I guess, to have these. We just, all of a sudden, we just started noticing they were all exceeding 35 feet. You know, so following the ordinance, we asked them to come here. Got a good variance. And a lot of what you look at, a lot of what y'all will look at on this is if this was on this a residential street and one was going to be ten feet taller than the that one next to it, as and I don't know what this one is compared to one that's on twenty acres and you can't see the next house. Is that kind of thing because you don't you don't want one. Unless it's two story and one, you know, two out of four from the one next to it. Just for aesthetic. And essentially, this one is yeah. going to be, I'm not sure whether you're familiar with the area, but it's you're going down down the road and you come to the drive range. If you look off back towards Dunbar, there's a big field and then there's a couple of houses. That big field back there, that's where this house is going to go at the end of Lancelot on the end of Dunbar. There's a little cul de sac that comes in or just in the street that ends. Originally, that was going to be a part of a, another neighborhood that was eventually going to be, but never did happen. It's just farmland. So he's going to put a house in that field. Okay. At the end of that street. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't see any issue. Case number 12, Lamar Advertising. Wants to change from a 30 foot height into a 40 foot height sign. Which one is this? I mean, it's not an extra I mean, is it H and H or? Yes, it's over next to H and H. It's in there a lot on the inside of their So line. it's the billboard, the yes. one that says dentures. That you can't see. That yeah. you can't see. If, well, if it helps y'all, the legal department stipulates that they have a hardship at the height they are and are okay with the 10 foot condition. Yeah, because you can't see it because of the Fellowship Baptist Church sign is blocking it. I would assume that's his hardship. So they're, they are going to make their billboard 10 feet taller. No more, no increase in the uh, size of the um, Graphics of what happened. No, sir. Okay. They're limited to 400 square feet. Just a taller sure. pole. Okay. The pole is going to be longer. Okay. Yeah. That's no, taller. They're going to move it up above the tree line. All right. Uh, then a follow up question for me is that if they go up the additional 10 feet, does that impact them should the thing fall down? You know, sometimes 30 feet, you you know, it will not hit anyone's place, but when you go up an additional 10 feet, now you got to, you know, your tree is taller than what it used to be, and it can yeah, fall on someone's I, building. Currently, if it fell, it would fall on the building that it's at now, so it wouldn't incur any more damage than it would. Okay. It's far enough away, I would think, from Cracker Barrel that it wouldn't hit it. But the building that is at H and H, sure. well, it but, might hit it. But when they do these things, we require them to have the engineering go wrong with. Making that extension. I, I understood. And the engineering was done at 30 feet versus the new 40 foot. It'll have it at 40 feet. Okay. It'll have to be redone. Yeah, it'll, they'll redo the engineering and add support structures <coughs> and do the evaluation. Now, mind you, when they engineer these things, 
our wind loads are at 90 miles an hour per second gusts. Usually when the engineer does these calculations, they do them at hurricane speed because it's a standard stamp across the board. The, oh, okay. the engineers are going to do them at 115 mile an hour winds Understood. per second gusts. So, uh, typically, they're they're over engineered to begin with. Well, we always much. require them to have that engineering documentation well, when they do these jobs. Sure. Well, that's certainly what I would like. Okay. okay. Right. Thank you for that. Case 13, Dale Seaborn. Seaborn. This is another appeal of an administrative decision. Woodall Road, couldn't have put in a mobile home where a house was. Okay. There are several mobile homes on the street, one actually next door. I guess, you know, they were grandfathered in. But I, I'm afraid I'll have a lot of trouble selling this lot if I can't get it approved for a mobile home. Right. The reason it's an administrative decision because the city ordinance doesn't allow for mobile homes inside of the city limits mm -hmm. unless it's already in an established mobile home park or a RMH district. So even if it's in an AG1 or any other residential district that we don't allow for it, unless it's an office trailer or something that affects what's going on with the construction job. So that's why it's here. Okay. Uh, but this... Can they take it off of the chassis and put it on a foundation and it becomes... No. Okay. Only, that's that's only in the RMH district. Okay. That's only that's the only district that allows for mobile homes, is they have to meet those specifications. If they did, you know, it has to be on a brick foundation and all of those other wonderful things that go along with that, uh, such as they have over in the only RMH district we have. And so, all right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Follow-up question. All right. I I I've heard what you shared about the. Uh, the city uh, does not allow mobile homes unless it is in a mobile home park. Uh, is this particular address on Woodall Drive because uh, the write-up shares that there's a mobile home next door to it, okay? And so uh, that's an area that maybe at one time Woodall yeah, was not in the city limits, right. but it is now in right. the city limits. Right, right. At some point, you know, there's a lot of mobile homes that are on Woodall and mm -hmm. some of them are in the city limits and some of them are some of them are existing okay uh, mobile homes there and have been there for a while sure uh, but it, it's, it's, it's kind of in and out through there anyway <clears throat> which is in the city limits and which is not it may be in our police jurisdiction which uh, you can put a mobile home in the police jurisdiction but you can't put it inside the corporate limits sure okay but with but the reason for the uh, <clears throat> appeal of the administrative decision the the write-up is that you cannot have a mobile home inside the city limits but uh with this particular area there are all mobile homes all around it right. and particularly even next door so that's why they right. come to us asking right. for relief <clears throat> of right. the particular situation right. understood right. 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 got you it can't say it's okay for them to do it yeah that's why we're here yeah you're too kind to us <laughs> got it yeah. we follow at least I follow. Thank you. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Looking for a twelve foot setback to build a porch. We don't have any this is just Yeah, this is just the pre meeting. Um, when your case comes up, we'll ask you and you'll get to explain and we'll ask you and you can ask us. This is just so we're all kinda on the same page how things are going. All right. Case number fourteen. Yep. Front yard. Is this the one that's come up several times? No. No? Not the same front porch? No. That one was over in, in the Austinville area. Okay. This one's over um, off of 6th Avenue. I don't know that we could tell a whole lot without no. pictures of <clears throat> what they want to do. Well, they want to, I guess, I don't know how big the porch is going to be. I was kind of on the side of the loop on this one. This came in kind of last yeah. day and a couple other guys. And well, right now, all the houses down there are on a building line. Right. And I don't know where that building line is as far as the setback. Right. So. 
but if it's if the building line and the setback was 12 foot, I don't know if you want the 12 foot deck or what. Right. Yeah. Just, I, I haven't seen anything on it other than what we got. Well, did, so basically, did he can we anything back else up here? Did Randy talk to him anymore? Um, look in the. All I can tell you to do is look in the folder. Well, not a lot in the folder. Just we don't have folders. Yeah. Well, in the accordion folder there. In the accordion folder there, Father. We saw some pictures and plans and surveys or something. All right. We need a survey or something. We have five minutes. We're talking about lakes. Yeah. Oh. So, I guess he's wanting to come 12 feet out from this way. This is the front of the house. Yeah. Yes, that's not that. So he's got 30 feet from the front. Minimum setback. Okay. And he's, his house. Other than the stoop sits back another just a couple of thirty four feet. feet on one side and thirty three on the other. So four feet. So he's gonna build out at least eight feet. Uh, at least. See, I, I believe when he came in he didn't know what he did. Yeah. But he was trying to get in to get it done. I'm the time because I don't know. I don't know if one of the other inspectors talked to him and was trying to work something out with him, but I and yeah, they were all in a hurry. So does he table them or does he just want us to just I think we'll just rule on whatever he wants. He can maybe explain off of this what he needs. He's got he asked for twelve. We can't give you more than twelve. We'll give less than twelve. So it depends on how big he was actually built like Right now all those houses don't have none of them have a porch. I do go by there. So his is going to stick out 12 feet. Yeah, past the front six months. Yeah. Okay. Eight feet off of this little porch that runs across. Take that one. Take that one. Well, but still, that four feet there.
this while they're on their way back. The Board of Zoning Adjustments of the City of Decatur is now in session. Here before the Board of Zoning Adjustments today, seeking special consideration to an ordinance based on special conditions, or the literal enforcement of an ordinance will result in an unnecessary hardship for you, or there has been an error in the enforcement of an ordinance. It will require four favorable votes from the Board to approve any request presented today. Please come forward when your name is called and state your name and address and what you want this board to do. All cases will be called in the docketed order. After your case has been heard and decided, you are free to leave. We won't call the roll till Reverend roll. Allen gets back. We're missing one. George went to the restroom. That's no excuse. Dwayne with all five here. You don't have to do the COVID thing. We're only considering if it's essential. You don't have to do that. Okay. While we're waiting on him, uh, several of y'all are requesting administrative offices. So you're going to hear some questions kind of over and over on this. Um, things like, do you have employees? Do you have signs? Customer traffic? Where you store your inventory and supplies and your deliveries? So I want to think about those answers to those questions so that when your case comes up, uh, we will be ready to go. Please call the roll. Call the roll. Wayne Dean. Here. Charles Taylor. Here. Suzanne Salcido. Here. Uh, Gio Allen. Here. Stephen Thomas. Here. All right. Are there any corrections to the minutes of last month's meeting? No corrections. Move to approve last month's meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. All right, please call the first case. This case is Bill Nelson Hernandez for termination of Judith Middle Field 625 in the zoning borders to have an administrative office for masonry business located at 1019 Moulton Street. The property located in the R3 Civil Family Zoning District. If you want to just approach the podium, let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Nelson Hernandez. And I live on 1049 Moulton Street East. Mm. <laughs> and I was trying to get some. I wonder if it's getting the feedback through the top. Yeah, the speaker. It could be getting the feedback through the speaker at the top. Speaker right above it. Just talk loud. Okay, so I was trying to get the city permit, so they told me I had to get this first. Okay. <clears throat> Questions from the board for Mr. Hernandez. Does the property owner, are they aware that yes. you're wanting to do this business? What kind of work equipment, supplies do you have? Um, right now at my home I just have my trailer and a couple, I guess, bricks lay different kind of bricks that I use on different jobs. Okay. And a couple of scaffolds. Not much then? Not much. No, I have more equipment, equipment but it's at um, uh, storage. Okay, that's fine. Do you have any employees? No, sir. Just yourself? Just myself. Okay. If your business grows and you do have employees, I mean, you can, but they just cannot report to work at your house, your home location. What about signs? Um, I just have a sign on my truck. And does the sign have your street address on there? No, sir. Good. You can have signs, name, telephone number, uh, internet site, whatever, but just not your street address. Oh, okay. okay. When you're doing a job, are you going to have the, the bricks and all of that delivered to the job site? Yes. Okay. No need to. So you'll never have two or three thousand bricks 
at your home at one time? Not right now, it's um, just 500. Because I'm going to use that for a job tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. No questions. Any more questions from the board? No question. Questions from the public? We are streaming online, so if you have questions, they can be emailed to Boza Questions at Decatur AL.gov. We will give approximately 90 seconds for anyone to email in. <clears throat> you guys will hear that said every time, too. Jeopardy, Jeopardy music. Yes, um, comments from the building department? No comments. Comments from the planning department? No comments. Okay. Took up 10 seconds of our minute and a half. Testimony is now closed. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Is there a motion? A motion that it be approved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any additional comments from the board? No amendment needed. Please call the roll. Yes. Charles Taylor. Yes. Susanna Yes. You are. Yay. Stephen Thomas. Yes. You have been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You'll take that Please call the next case. Come downstairs. Martina. Uh, this is application bill Martina Haley for. Uh, is that right? Martina. Martina. For determination is used for mental field section 2510 zoning ordinance have administrative office for an online fashion accessory business located at 1806 Running Mead Avenue, Southwest Apartment 203D. Probably is in an R4 multifamily residential district. Tell us your name, your address, and what it is you would like us to do for you. My name is Martina Haley. My address is 1806 Running Meat Avenue, apartment 203D as in dog, Cater, Alabama, uh, 35601. And I am trying to start a website with my uh, company name calling the Blossom Company. Uh, it would be fashion accessories like handbags, bracelets, anklets, necklaces, earrings, etc. Are you going to keep inventory at your apartment? Yes, in an extra room I have. I have a two-bedroom apartment. Okay. Uh, with your inventory, uh, customers cannot come to your uh, business. I mean, cannot come to your address to look Purchase. at the thing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good. Because it's an administrative office all in. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, so your sales will all be online? Yes, ma'am. And you'll ship? Yes, ma'am. To them or arrange to meet them somewhere? Yes, ma'am. You heard all the, everything that she said before about advertising and all of that? Right? Um, the advertising, I heard them say you can't have your address on it. Yeah, you can't have your address on, on your placard. Like if you say you, have, uh, you choose to have your automobile as advertising for your mm -hmm. business, you can have your website and telephone number and things like that, but you cannot have your uh, address, you know, right, right in me. Everything your street your address. address. Right. Okay. It's okay. That's yeah. Including like your business cards and stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So only my name and my phone number on the website. Phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Social Email, media. Any ways to contact you and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Social media. Yes. So just, just don't. Just not your street address. address since they can't come to your house for that. Okay. You're going to have inventory at your apartment. How do you get that inventory? Of a website. A wholesale website. Okay, be delivered to your apartment. Yes. Uh, just common carrier or. Um, normally it's like FedEx or UPS. Okay. Just normal deliveries. Yes, like or the agent. Okay. I think it is. That's it. Yeah. 
Okay. The point's not to have an 18-wheeler full of stuff <laughs> show no. up at your apartment to deliver, which would be <laughs> exceeding your one room of <coughs> use anyway, but right. normal deliveries that your neighbors could have right. are okay. The normal delivery sources. We have had some applications <laughs> where the uh, applicant lives in an apartment only to find out that the apartment has restrictions concerning no business whatsoever. Uh -huh. So is your owner aware? Yes, I have a letter here as well. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. Take your word for it. Thank you. And we usually get letters in the other direction if, they, <laughs> if they're not okay with it. Right. Any more questions from the board? No question. Comments from the public? Those can be emailed to bozoquestions at decatur.al.gov. Comments from the building department? No comments. from the planning department? No comments. Now we wait. Now we wait a minute and 17 seconds. <laughs> Call in now. Then while you get all the questions in and the mm -hmm. comments, we can do that. Your minute and a half is running. Yes. Okay. That's good. Yeah, we'll do that then. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a long, quiet time. Public testimony is now closed. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Is there a motion? Move to approve this application. Is there a second? I second. Please call the roll. Charles Taylor? Yes. Susanna Cecilia? Yes. Gio Allen? Yes. David Thomas? Yes. Yes. You have been approved. Thank you all so much. Good, Good. luck. Bye. Thank Good, you. luck. Good luck. Please call the next case. Case number three, application field for Marshall Jones County for termination as you be permitted on field section 2510 of the zoning ordinance and administrative office for online craft sales located at 3102 Sumac Road, Southwest Properties, located in the Arthur Single Family Zone. Hi, my name is Latasha Jones Campbell and I live at 3102 Sumac Road, Decatur, Alabama, 35603. And I am here today to get approved for online craft on uh, sales. Okay. And uh, public input can be sent to Boza Questions at Decatur dot or Decatur dash AL dot gov for anyone watching online that has a comment or question about this. But do I have questions from the board? Yes, I want to ask again. You heard everything else, you know, about the business and. Your inventory, do you have anything to say regarding that? No, I understand. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. okay. Are you making the crafts yourself? Yes. Right. What type? I make um, wood crafts like the welcome signs and the uh, door hangers that people have on their doors. Last names and different like baby signs and stuff like that. But small, yes. small items, relatively yes. small items. And it's made out of wood. Again, you heard us, it'd be the same thing. Uh, no customers can come to your house to talk to you about ordering or pick up their orders, so you would either ship to them or arrange to meet them um, outside of your, your property. Okay. Ms. Cameron, have you got a web address, not web address, uh, for the sake of the discussion, let's pretend that someone would love to perhaps patronize your business. How would they contact? Well, thing. right now I'm just on Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Thank you.
Any other questions from the board? I'm good. No questions. No questions. Do you have any comments from the public here or online? <coughs> comments from the building department. Uh, no comments. Make sure there's not anything Comments from the planning department? Pam, are you, is there anything you're going to do make any sounds or smells or any vibrations or anything? No, I actually purchased my wood from a company in Love the Show. And I just bring the raw material home and paint it and do different designs and stuff on it. Yeah. <laughs> there being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Is there a motion? Approved. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll. Suzanne Cecilia? Yes. T.O. Allen? Yay. Stephen Thomas? Yes. Yes. Charles Tedder? Yes. This has been approved. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Please call the next case. Case number four, application field time off for determination of the Houston Middle Field Section 2510 of the Zoning Ordinance to have an administrative office, or excuse me, to have a uh, cookie business located in 4501 Little Bend Road, Southeast Park, located in R2 Single Family Zone District. Hi, I'm Pam Alford. This is my daughter, Claire. She's the baker. And uh, she's been baking since she's about four years old, and she would like the opportunity to sell her cookies uh, to uh, individuals that would place an order with her either. Will you state your address oh, just 45, for the record? Okay, 4501 Willow Bend Road, Southeast Decatur, 35603. And so, uh, so an individual could place an order with her and she would make cookies for them either for a, an event, a wedding shower, a wedding reception, baby shower, something like that. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, questions from the public can be sent to Boza Questions at Decatur-AL.gov for any of you not here on the property. Questions from the board. You know, Ms. Alfred, as you have heard, uh, with the uh, as your business grows and, and takes off, uh, you cannot have any signs that list your home address. Uh, all of the things that as you grow, you may have. Uh, internet access and websites and things like that, but no uh, addresses and things like that. Okay? And no customers, uh, even though you're baking the cookies, you would have to deliver the cookies to the individuals as opposed to them uh, being allowed to come to your home to pick up the cookies. Okay. okay. You can put your mom and dad to work since they live at the same address, but you heard the, the no employees <laughs> outside right. of people that live in the house. That's right. I apologize. I was looking at your mom. I should have been looking at you because <laughs> you're the worker. She's the yeah. maker. Yes, and we did talk baker. to the health department and get our certificate, serve safety certificate. We still have a letter on that one. Yes. Who wants them? I told her to bring some cookies. <laughs> She's just like, I'm not going to bribe them. Oh, it works. Oh. <laughs> it's a nice gesture. <laughs> <laughs> it's an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Comments from the public here or through email? Bob? No. No. <laughs> comments from the building department? No comments. Comments from the planning department? He's mad because you didn't bring cookies. <laughs> Public testimony is now closed. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I offer a motion for the approval of the request from the office to use a home occupation. No uh, second. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. G.O.L. Yes. Stephen Thomas. Yes. Andy. Yes. Charles Taylor. Yes. Susanna Yes. You have been approved. Thank you. We're here on the last Tuesday of every month. So you can bring cookies <laughs> next time. We won't remember that. Mm -hmm. Please call the next case. Case number five, application appeal of Andrew C. Strong III for termination as you submitted on 
uh, a bill from the zoning ordinance to have an administrative office for our music production business located at 2731 Longfellow Drive Southway, the property located in the R2 Zone District. Let's state your name and your address and tell us what you would like to do. Andrew C. Strong, the third. <coughs> 2731 Longfellow Drive, Southwest of Dallas, Southwest. I am doing music production, and uh, every part of the music will be electronically done. And I'll be sending the music off to different studios uh, wherever in the world it needs it. All right, uh, I know we have some, some in the room for public comments and questions. Any other ones can be sent to Boza questions at decatur-al.gov. And we will check for those. Uh, questions from the board. Uh, will you be recording or you'll just be using electronic to produce music? Or will you be producing on, on the site? I, I will be doing some production on the site. Uh -huh. That's going to create a problem for me. Okay. Say production. I, I mean, I'm doing electronic music, so I play piano. Okay. And so by me playing piano, it'll go into a, a computer device, okay. and I can have on headphones. No one has to That's hear fine. it. Okay. You know. okay. Is it just you? It's just me. So no, no one is coming to the premise. No, no one is coming. So no bands. No bands. No. <laughs> Other questions from the board? Mr. Strong, you share that uh, that no one will come by uh, your facility, uh, come to your home, I'm sorry, to uh, to record music or to play music and, and things like that. Uh, we, we seem to hear that uh, that that's already occurring at your at your facility, at your home, what have you. Well, I'm their plan. Okay, yeah, I do play. You you do play. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 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 that's the uh, thing. Okay, uh, as as you've heard, us, well, you may not have been in, in here. Uh, people are not allowed to uh, any of your customers or anything like that are not allowed to come to your home. Uh, in fact, uh, the business, uh, the the what the board, if it would approve, your house should just look just like a regular home with no. Uh, traffic or anything like that coming in as far as people coming by your place your home should just look just like any of the other homes it should not have any uh, congregates uh, you know go, going around dropping off and different things except for things that would be normal UPS should you uh, use uh, certain kind of electronic equipment that's just dropped off and things like that okay. no none of that would be done uh, all of the music is sent uh, via email if they send to me what they need, and I send them back the product, which is the music. Understood. Okay. Uh, Brother Strong. Yes, sir. Your neighbors seem to think that you may be already recording. They complain about your music. My neighbors complain about my music? Mm hmm I don't I know. The volume of it is what they were. Oh, okay. Right, right. right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know anything about that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm pretty good friends with my neighbors, and I, I felt like, you know, they would have came to me and said something, but I, I don't, I'm not aware of any of that. Okay. Maybe that needs to be taken a little more in consideration, you know? I mean, my family, everybody plays music, so uh, my question was Matthew's question. You know, we kind of do electronic music too, you know, and, and my husband records in his house for his own, I guess, enjoyment, but uh, it shouldn't be where my neighbors here. And nobody's telling you that you cannot, you know, have a party at your house or, you know, with your friends or whatever, but just the way it doesn't give the appearance that you're having a production business at your house. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Yes, M Mr. Strong, you uh, you shared that your music is electronic. Is that only done in one room in your home, or do you do it somewhere else? No, just home? one room. 
Just one room. One room playing like, I, like I the do piano. Have, I do have a piano in another room in the house mm -hmm. where I openly practice. So that could have been what you know. People, the, yeah, but but, the, but it's but, a grand piano. So I, I guess if you but you're you know, not came out. outside, you would hear it. But I I doubt very seriously anyone has heard me. It, while they were inside their house. Sure. And so you do not have a studio or anything like that on your property? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Questions or comments from the public? Yeah. All right. If y'all want to come up, there's more than one of y'all that wants to speak. Um, state your name and address. And you can just. Yeah. My name is William Smith, and I live at 2705 Longfellow. They're a national subdivision. I have any, we don't have anything against Brother Strong or any of his family. Uh, but uh, we do have some concerns about a business there in our subdivision. We don't know what causes that. Uh, this, this, the, the, he's want this zoning re, rezoned for is for a business, and I, as I know, the, you folks are not uh, charged with the responsibility of uh, governing governance and restrictions, but there are governance and restrictions on that property that uh, were set up in 1979 for this resident. This is set up for residential purposes only, not for businesses of any kind. Uh, we don't we don't want to have a music business there we don't i'm sorry no i just wanted to mention that um, he is not asking to rezone we will not we are we, we cannot rezone anything an administrative office is permitted in the zone residential district and he's right. asking just for an administrative office it or what we, we we're opposed to having a business there in the subdivision well you're aware that there's already three in that subdivision no i'm not well, they are. <laughs> but that doesn't make them legit. They are legit. They've well, been approved by the boards. They're not necessarily legit according to the covenants and restrictions that I'm reading, sir. Okay. There, there's a difference between neighborhood covenants I understand that. and the zoning. We can approve something, and if it's against the, the covenants, it's up to the neighborhood to you enforce those covenants. You can approve anything that you decide to approve. I understand yes. that. Yes. And then it's up to the neighborhood to enforce their I understand their that covenants. part, too. Okay. I, I prefaced this by saying that I realize you were not responsible for governing the covenants and restrictions. But we're still not. There is a, a list up here that, of neighbors yes. that are. Now, nobody over there has got anything against him personally. Correct. Don't even know the man. They do not know me. But we still would rather not have a business or any business in there. Uh, my friend David Moore and I might want to put up a small engine business back there. And he's, he's in the very back of the neighborhood. I don't think he'd ever like that, although we wouldn't make a lot of noise either. But anyway, that's my point. He's asking just for... An, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. He's asking for an administrative office inside I understand, his home. That's but it's a business. It's stated on here as a business. Music production business. Is this correct? Um, the well, business is not going to be located inside his residency. It's just the office where, yeah. you know, he might be working from his computer or processing his mail, taking care of his clients. Am I going in the right direction? That's the part that okay. he's trying to do so in his home. If I want to start a mail order business over there and have <laughs> UPS and FedEx and somebody else run up down the streets in that small neighborhood all the time, I still. Just an office there. Do you think you'd want to permit that? That um, is what all of those delivery doing. services are allowed in that like neighborhood it? today. Mm -hmm. You think the neighbors would like it? But they will. But they're already the, there. To develop, like for Amazon, they go all the time to just drop packages. People that are ordering daily, they go. I like you're avoiding my point. Oh, no. Uh, but to tell you, it, it is. He, it is a question. Sorry, I don't hear real good. Sorry. It, he did say a business. But it's not the type of business that you or I would think of. It's not like 75 or 100 people going to run through his house per day. 
I don't uh, know how many be there. Well, he can't have any see, customers come to his house. He can have friends, family outside the of the music have too. <laughs> if, if he break if he break the guidelines, I'm certain his business will be no longer, or that administrative office will be no longer. If you'll come up to the podium and state your name and. Um, question I have. Um, first of all, my name is Wayne Smith. Oops. Wife of Bill Smith. 2705 Longfellow Drive. It says case number five, application and appeal. Andrew Strong for determination as use permitted on appeal as allowed in section 2510, so forth and so on of the zoning ordinance to have an administrative office for music production business. Okay, in this case, you would have to rezone it to, from R2 single family residential zoning to a business zoning. No. It's not that type of business, ma'am. There's nothing to do with rezoning. Why does it have to be rezoned then? Why can't it's you just start his own rezoned. business? It's not being rezoned. It's, it's allowing the administrative office for his business. Within his home. Within his home. That is what a, uh, well, then a why, use permitted on appeal. Why did he have to get a permit? Then why couldn't he just start it? Because it's use permitted on appeal, meaning he has to ask to do this. The, well, the way the zoning ordinance works is that uses permitted on appeal, mm -hmm. uh, they can't be allowed unless BOZA approves. They are allowed in that neighborhood if BOZA approves. Okay. So it's just a check and balance to make sure that it's an administrative office and not going to disrupt the neighborhood as opposed to some kind of manufacturing that would disrupt the neighborhood or there would be um, customers coming in and out uh, if it the rules say that you can't you should not be able to tell driving by or being in the neighborhood that there's a business being conducted in that house if you can tell that then the building department you report it to the building department and it stops the, this could be withdrawn but it's not there's not 18 wheelers can't bring stuff in but UPS and FedEx can because they're in the neighborhood anyway no customers at all can come there the the advertising can't list that as the business address because then people would be coming there to do business all the business has to be conducted online in that room or off site somewhere so it's not a rezoning it's uh, it's allowed if it, it's permitted in there if if both it determines that it's not going to be disrupted to the neighborhood. So our covenants and restrictions for our little subdivision are null and void. Yeah. No, they're they're purely enfor they're they're absolutely enforceable. You have to t go to court across the street to enforce those. Okay. This is just what can be permitted. We that the covenants are a private agreement between parties. And the city doesn't get in the in the middle of that. Okay. All right. I just didn't. I couldn't understand this because it is, com it is to a me, confusing. I have another question though. Uh, she mentioned that there are two or three other businesses in there. So if one of these businesses is going out outside of your guidelines, whatever they are, then who polices that? We come back to you folks. Yeah. You just you if you if you have a, a complaint. Then you send it. You call the building department. If you they're if they're operating it? the business, huh? You think that'll stop it? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Because if if they're outside of it, we'll look to see their business license and what they were granted. We'll send them a subpoena to come back to this board and explain why they're outside of their outside of their guidelines. Well, so what has to report it to you? Yeah. It's not something that you get out and find yourself. No. Oh, no, it's not but about five or six of us up there. And well, I know building they, inspections too. I know that there. I know of one of these businesses that you speak of. Where's that? Okay, I know of it. Okay. I don't know the other two, but well, I don't see the little red dots on the map. Do you see it right there? You want to get closer? Yeah, I see. And that is part of the point is you're not supposed to know they're there unless you've seen the paperwork in the map. I'll tell you, one of them is my house. I live in all of y'all's neighborhood. My neighbor across the street probably didn't realize I had one at my house. Yes. And that's the whole thing. And that's the point. You're not supposed kind of business, to. The neighbor shouldn't realize it. Right, but for it to be approved by this board, it has to be something that's not obvious. Okay. You know, I have... Uh, 
monograming, embroidery, craft type things, sewing machines. But it's all done within, you know, one room in the house, but no one knew, you know, unless they were here when got the letter when I got mine, however many years ago, they wouldn't know that there's a business. I don't know what the other two are, but. Are there other comments from the public? If we get any on through email? No. Any other comments or questions from the board? Comments from the building department? It's been uh, something come back up. shed that's been moved into the backyard. Excuse me, sir? It's been a shed moved into the backyard? Yep, yes, sir. How big is the shed? Uh, uh, it's like a, <clears throat> a 10 by 15 or something like that. 10 by 15. Yes, like How that. far is it setting off the property line? On my property line. Okay. This zoning ordinance requires those accessory structures to be five feet off the sides and five feet off the rear. If so it's under so 200 square feet, you don't have to have a building permit. Is so there any electrical run to it? Sir. Is there any electrical run to the, no, to the building? No, sir. So there's no electrical that's been run mm -hmm. at any point out there. You're not planning on conducting your music studio in that? Oh, building. no, 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 no. Okay. That was what that was for. Uh, if, if the building is under 200 square feet, you don't have to have a building permit, but you have to be five feet off your property lines. Five feet off? Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, from I'm the rear. More, I'm more than five feet. My, I mean, my backyard is really huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So as long as, as long as it's five feet off the sides and five feet off the rear, then it's allowed. Uh -huh. yeah. But it's, if it's more than 200 square feet, it requires a building permit. Uh -huh. So you might want to look to see if when you get back measured, make sure it's under 200 square feet. Okay. What will be the steps for him to take if he happened to be bigger than what he thought it was? He'd have to file for a building permit. Okay. And then at that point, we would come out and look at the structure to see how it's anchored uh, and then it meets the building code. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. I would also, uh, just for the record, the, the documents that were received, the petition and the mm -hmm. letters, just say that those are part of the record and then she'll put it Okay. Up. Yeah, we do have uh, a couple of emails and a petition signed by some of the neighbors. I um, also have a letter. Those will be made part of the, the minutes and the package for this month's meeting. Right. Uh, building department, is that all from you? That's all. Just realize that if something starts being conducted in the building, then that'll be a problem. It, can't, it can only happen inside of the home. Comments from the planning department? No comment. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Is there a motion? I motion that it be allowed to uh, set up an administrative office. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll. Stephen Thomas? Yes. Dean? Yes. Tom Taylor? Yes. Yes. Do you allow? Yay. You have been approved. Please call the next case. Uh, That's going to be... <laughs> Lee. Canavius, Therese Lee. Yeah, the first. Disc jockey. cases is the feedback 
is the feedback controlled over there, or is the feedback just going to happen? The feedback is because of that light in front of that speaker when they get close to it. And just up. just walking to it makes it. I was just good since we got a half a moment. And you can't get it anywhere but anywhere. So just walking up to it just gets us a what's good. You might bring it to be more in the center of the Bob. Did you call up Jasmine sharply too? Because this person's the next two cases. That'll get six, seven, and eight. Oh, mic check, mic check. Oh, 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 it's coming from there. Okay. Okay. I need to put that chair here. Yeah. Mr. Lee? All right. Here's the podium, please. This is an application in the field of cannabis. Please. Neighbor. Take neighbor. Uh, for a determination as used for Federal Field Section 2510 of the Zoning Ordinance, have an administrative office for a uh, preservation service. No, this is the disc jockey. Should be one before. One right above it. You have two, but we're going to do them separate. Okay. I'm agreeing. Have the dis administrative office for a disc jockey service at 10, 13 Terre Haute Avenue Southwest property located in, in an R2 single family zoning district. You'll state your name and your address and what it is you would like for this board to do for you. My name is Lee, 1013 Terre Haute Avenue, Southwest. I would like to get approved to my business, DJ K. Rock, my location for administrative use. Okay. You won't be throwing no big parties in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you'll be going to remote locations to do this? Yes, Nothing sir. at your location? Nothing at my location. Any other people helping you with this? No, sir. Just yourself, okay. How do you advertise? Uh, on Facebook. Just on Facebook, okay. Your Facebook cannot have your street address on it. Right. Um, you can have website, telephone number, name of the business, anything but your street address. What kind of equipment do you have? Uh, two speakers and a one sub. Okay, so just fits in a car? Yeah, my trailer that I have. Okay. Do you store that trailer at your house? Yes. Yeah. How large is the trailer? It's four by six. Oh, small. Small, okay. You know, if you got to the point where you did have employees or helpers, they can't show up at your house. They would have to meet you at, you know, wherever you're going to do the, the parties or the events. Correct. Um, talked about advertising. Mm -hmm. We have questions from the public. They can be emailed to bozaquestions at gator-al.gov. Um, are there any other questions from the board? No questions. No questions. Yes, good. Questions from the public here or in the building? Comments from the building department? Comments from the planning department? No comments. All right. Sorry, I forgot about my hmm. email question, so we'll give them a, a hmm. minute to respond. Is the business owner or the property owner aware that you're doing this? Okay. Set my timer on this one. Okay. Time is up. All right. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair. Uh, for motion that uh, Mr. Lee be granted the use of one room as a home occupation. Is there I, a second? I second the motion. Please call the roll. Lane Dean? Yes. Charles Taylor? Yes. Sam Yes. Joe Allen? Yes. Stephen Thompson? Yes.
you have been approved. Okay. But don't go anywhere. Stay put. You're up next. Please call the next case. Application to the Commission for Termination as used to be on Section 25 in the zoning ordinance to have administrative office for reservation service business at 1013 Terre Haute Avenue, Southwest Park, located on the Avenue, St. Clement's Zone District. Now you make it. Don't forget, uh, go ahead and state your name and what you want us to do, and then I'll read my email address. Mavis Lee, 1013 Terre Haute Avenue, Southwest. I would like to use one office for my property preservation. Right. Uh, questions from the public can be sent to Boza Questions at Decatur-AL.gov. Explain to us all what a property preservation office is, because we have gone from everything from taxidermy <laughs> to music yeah, preservation. Yeah. Well, it's like um, you get work orders from banks or real estate-owned people to go and do work for them to get the house approved for inspection or something like that. It's really easy. Like changing locks, doing a little roofing. If I have to get a contractor, I'll hire one to just do the work. Okay. So strictly an administrative office right. for this business. Nothing is being done at your house. Right. We were all wrong. Yes, because it sounds like <laughs> your preservation means like superintendent of a of, of facility of, 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 of an office building and things like that. Because I'm, I'm still, I just didn't, did not quite catch what. The job, what the job is. It, 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 I understand it that you're just using administrative thing. I just did not understand what the business model was. Okay. Again, same thing. If you have employees, um, the roofers, the, the whoever, they can't meet you at your house and ride over to the job site. They would need to meet you either at the job site or somewhere you know, off site. And, in, and no advertisement with your address on it, okay? Any other questions from the board? Do you have any email, email comments? Yeah, I got one, but it's got nothing to do with this. It's got to do about the mask. <laughs> <laughs> the mask? They want to take them off? The mask ordinance, I think they're, oh. they may have got the Confused. Oh. Okay. Um, yes. As far as the work that you may be doing, are you, are you aware of the state contractor's laws? Okay. So once you once you get outside of this, the general maintenance and changing locks, and you get into the roofing and and going in and doing a little remodeling and all this, that kind of throws you into being a contractor, right. not necessarily just somebody that's going out. And Helping the mortgage companies or whoever gets the property ready. So, if you do that, you may have to get your state contractor's license, either home builders or general, based off the dollar amount in how. Because you, you're basically going to be a general contractor or the main owner of the job if you're hiring other mm -hmm. subs to do the work. Mm -hmm. So, you want to be careful about doing that as you go along because <coughs> if you don't have the right permits, so like do roof jobs and whatnot. I'm not here. <laughs> want, want you to be aware of that. I'm not going that yeah, Okay. Well, I mean, it's not a bad endeavor. I mean, there's a lot of homes that have been foreclosed on and are empty and need some work done on them. We just don't want you going too far at the building department without the proper license because that can get you in trouble, not just at a global level, but at the state level. Uh oh. Ha! I need to talk to who's in charge. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's your name? Okay. <laughs> well, I say that I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm glad when the police shows up. I'm glad you're in charge. Uh, this is a volunteer position for me. I'm, yeah. It's not me for sure. You see, Matt. Matthew, are you not in charge here too? That's going to be too All right. Comments from the planning department. We can't take that. Any other comments from the, the board? Do so I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. And second. All right. We'll wait on Chip to call the roll. Bottle to call the roll. 
Chip, Chip won't call the roll. Bob will call the roll. Got to hung off on. There, Bob is leaving. Bob needs to say we went social distancing. Nancy, can you no, call the roll? Security people can't manage the. They can't be sending people up and using their personal phones to call people up and down. Oh. Uh, when we're meeting in the council chambers, one of us goes out and gets them to come, and we had security doing it. Okay. And so they they need to focus on security. Yep. We don't want to get them outside of their contract. I understand. Mm -hmm. They hit us with the personal services. We have a motion and a second. Oh, yeah. Can Nancy call the roll? Yes. Susanna. Salcido? Yes. Stephen <laughs> Thomas? Yes. Jelaine Dean? Yes. Charles Taylor? Yes. George Allen? Yes. Yeah. You have been approved. All right. Good job, Mr. Lee. Um, oh. You can't call the next page. Yeah. Take both of these. This will show the remedy. <laughs> Chip, can I call the next case? Can Nancy sure. call the next case? I'll call the next yes. case. Um, we are on case number eight, application and appeal of Jasmine Sharpley. For determination as a use permitted on appeal is allowed in section 25-10 as defined in article 6 as amended and adopted of the zoning ordinance to have an online athletic clothing and accessories business at 1216 Gold Ridge Drive, Southwest number 3. Property is located in an R40 multifamily zero lot line residential zoning district. <laughs> State your name and your address and what you would like us to do. My name is Jasmine Sharpley. My address is 1216 Gold Beach, apartment 3, Decatur, Alabama, 35640. And I'm applying for an online athletic clothing and accessories website. That's not your zip code, but that's okay. What did I say? Three, you five, said Hartzels. That's my grandma's. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 35603. Five, <laughs> okay. And you, so have you been in here the whole time? Um, I just came up. Okay. okay. I don't remember what people have heard. Um, questions from the public can be directed to Boza questions at decatur al.gov. Um, no. Ms. Sharpley, with, uh, with, with the request for using a room in your home as a home office, you cannot have customers coming to your home. I know you shared that it is an online. Uh, activity and uh, that would be the the method to to make sure that everything goes. If they purchase, you mail it out and things like that. Yes. And and if you receive things, we share that no 18 wheeler loads of things like that. But the regular drop offs of Federal Express, uh, UPS, Postal Service, those things are definitely allowed and things like that. And on your advertisement. Uh, you cannot have your home address as part of your, your business card. You can have all of the other things as far as online addresses and, and cell phones and things like that, but no personal address so that your neighbors will not know that you're running a business from your home. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Are you going to keep an inventory at your house, or is it something when they order, you order? Um, it'll be like, I might have like two or three, but it won't be like a book loan. It'll be like to order. Questions from the board? The uh, Weaver Realty, are they aware that you're doing uh, this? Yes, they um, contacted me and asked me to send them a description of what was going on. Good, thank you. That's all. Any emails from the public? Comments from the public? <clears throat> You said we had. Your time was good. Okay. Uh, comments from the building department. No comments. Comments from the planning department. No comments. Public testimony is now closed. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll. Elaine Dean? Yes. Charles Taylor? Yes. Dennis Salcedo? Yes. 
You, uh, Stephen Thompson. Yes. You have been approved. <clears throat> Please call the next case. We're on nine. I did your job, and that's way too many words to read. Yeah. Do it for about 12 years. It's kind of run into it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nine. Nine. Uh, the application appeal, uh, appeal is uh, administrative decision by Stinky Payton, section 2510 of the zoning ordinance uh, to store and uh, bottle or resell alcohol beverages at 2205 College Street. located in R1 single family zone. Hey, how are y'all? My name is Stephen Good. Haight. I live at 2205 College Street, Southeast Decatur, Alabama 35601. Uh, I'm looking for, I guess, an administrative variance to start a liquor brand. Hey, um, comments and questions from the public can be sent to Boza Questions at decatur al.gov. We have received several um, emails from the public that will be made part of this official package. Questions from the board? Mr. Pate? Yes, sir. Uh, your, your variance says various for operation of new whiskey uh, brand label. Uh, will you please share with us how and, and what is going on, whether or not you are distilling at your facility or, or how, how this product is, is, how you're planning to uh, operate your business model? Um, it's it's not new whiskey. It's aged five years from a distiller in Tennessee. Um, I'll be going there to pick it up. It'll be one barrel at a time. Um, and I'll bring it back along with the bottles to my garage. Uh, I can store them in the house or the garage, whichever way you guys think necessary. Um, and then I've got a bottler that's about the size of a coffee maker. Um, I'll get it bottled, packaged up, and then the ABC board picks it up, and then I call bars, liquor stores, and try to sell it to them over time. Okay, so you are, so you're procuring uh, single barrel. Yes, sir. Uh, from a distributor, from from a manufacturer, who, whoever that happens to be, and then you're going to place your label on that and then sell that uh, and, and turn it over to the ABC store so them to do the, the right taxing and things like that. But what I'm but what what I'm interested in is the understanding of your volume. You shared one barrel at a time. Yes sir. Uh, and you shared that you would be the mm -hmm. one to go to the facility and to bring the barrel back and I picture one barrel in the back of a pickup truck or what have you yes, like sir. that. And that is your business model. It's not multiple bears, it's not storing, uh, aging the process. The process is aged at someone else's facility. Yes, sir. Okay. And I can't I can't afford more than one barrel at a time. <laughs> so it's not you don't have to worry about me having more than one. Okay. It'll be under lock and key. You guys can come check it out All right. time. So will you be bottling or will you have someone bottling for you? I will be doing the bottling. Okay. Yes, sir. So you don't have a you don't have a crew of three or four people? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Did I hear you correctly that the ABC will after you bottle it, they will come pick it up? Is that yes, what you're well I, I can take it to them. Um, I know they pick them up in box trucks like a UPS truck. Uh -huh. There shouldn't be an 18-wheeler. I don't have enough for them to send an 18-wheeler. But if it's a problem, I can take it there to myself. Okay. I do have one up. Approximately how many paints come out of a barrel? I'll get, I'll get 250 bottles out mm -hmm. of a barrel. Okay. And the cases I buy the bottles from, I'm just taking the actual cases that carry them and putting my label inside of that too, so there's not going to be a bunch of boxes okay. along with it. So. Okay. okay, so you say 250. Is, okay, so. I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. you, you have. No, I was just wondering, I'm very curious, like the ABC rules. Um, about storing in your home and all that, you just have to. Have you gone through the process with yeah, them? Yeah, I've got a I've got a letter from uh, Laura Tucker. She's the licensing and compliance supervisor. I can give you guys a copy of it. Um, not spill anything here. 
think. Yes, You are asking for an appeal of an administrative decision. It's my understanding uh, that the building department mm -hmm. that Somebody, I don't know if there is somebody in the building department. The building we department made, denied the building this. Right. So this one is different from the other ones that have been here today. This is uh, an appeal of a decision that's been mm -hmm. passed down by the building department. Mr. Pate. Yes, sir. Uh, you shared that uh, perhaps uh, <coughs> nearly 250 uh, bottles are able to be uh, out of one barrel, uh, and you shared that it would be uh, provided to a to the ABC store. Uh, is this? Uh, I I guess once you break the seal on a barrel, mm -hmm. you need to go forward and bottle it all yeah, at that particular time. And then the shipment of 250 uh, boxes. How many? Uh, and I'm taking that a case would be six. If I guess it just depends upon the size of your uh, of your product. So, but you're saying that UPS will do those, you know, pickups or what have you, as opposed to something else being the way it, to get it, it from be, your facility. It would be a UPS size truck, like okay. a, that size delivery. Truck. Understood. The standard size truck. Yes, sir. It okay. would be the, uh, the ABC board picking it up, though. No, if, they, if I can deliver it to them personally, then that would but be the only Okay, I'll follow. Is, is, is that safe? Is that okay, according to the law, for the ABC store to come to his home and pick up the merchandise? Is that is that okay? As far as I know, it would be because it's not a... I mean, they be thief goes where they want to, but they, but given the size of the truck and it's not some, you know, semi coming in to get okay. it, so okay. it would be <coughs> I don't the produce equivalent enough. of a UPS picking up several boxes from a house because at Christmas is impossible. Okay. Mr. Payton, is your business model showing that one barrel is, uh, is achievable in a certain length of time. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm asking, how how long does it take to go from one barrel down to your bottling situation? Because I'm, if I'm your neighbor, mm -hmm. I, I'm sitting here and I am thinking that okay, you're going to go mm -hmm. and and get your barrel and you go on Saturday and then you, you once a week you make your run, if you will. It <laughs> almost sounds like a it almost sounds like a bootleg. Like bootleg, yeah. Yeah, it really does sound already. like bootleg. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, is it once? Is, is your business model showing one barrel of? I think week? it's gonna take a good while to to move a, a barrel of whiskey. I think it'll take a good while for 250 bottles to get sold. I, you know, I think it'll probably be a one once a month thing. Oh, so uh, you at best start now. Um, okay, so your I so as you shared a moment ago. Once you pick up the barrel, and once you break the seal on the barrel, you then bottle the 250. Yes. And then the bottling of the 250 stays in a storage place until you have the order, if you will, to make that next well, they, sale. They, they would pick it up regardless. ABC Boy yeah, ABC Boy is going to come get it, but yeah, they will, I think you just shared, they will not come and get it until you have made a sale. I thought that's what you said. No, they, okay. they'll have it for. So for they will get the that. complete 250 when you bottle it, and then they'll ship it back to you for you to store it with the labeling on it. No, the, they'll store it in the ABC wareharse. Okay. And then if they distribute they're, it from them, yes. from there. The oh, so it's distributed from, from there. Mm -hmm. okay. So once he's done sticking. His Once he's done his labeling and done that and given to the ABC store, then he is away from the business. Here's what I mean by the words away from the business. You no longer have alcohol on your premises. You no longer are bottling anything. You no longer have a barrel there. Everything is just, uh, you, you, you've done however long it takes you to, to go from the barrel to the 250. Mm -hmm. If that takes you a week or two weeks or whatever it does, that's what it does. Then after that time, you are dependent upon the, uh, the order of, you, of your other items. And then when those orders come in, your responsibility then is just to make the phone call to the ABC store. It is not that the neighbors 
would then be concerned that something's coming up. You got a one-time shot that you've done your things, yeah. and if business booms up, then I can you, move off somewhere else, hopefully. You right. Have to, you know, yeah, if, if you're selling at this, because you, you, you're doing single barrel, which is not, uh, sometimes they say single barrel can be expensive. Okay, so I, I follow what you say. All right, it thank you a, for that question. It was a fire concern okay. if you had, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. barrels and barrels of, of alcohol at I your had house. a neighbor on our Facebook group worried about ventilation in the, before I bought the house, they had a hot tub and it's got a vent in there and it's also got a window, so ventilation shouldn't be a problem. Well, and several of your neighbors um, seem to think it's going to be a liquor store with people coming and going, which you know you cannot do. Um, that seemed to be the general gist of the concerns we got, you know, unnecessary traffic and You've heard all the other ones. Yeah. So you, you can't have traffic yeah, other than the, yes, the delivery truck coming and going, which could come and go and anyway. If that's, if that's even a problem, which it should only, they should only be coming once a month. If that's a problem, I can carry it myself. Um, it shouldn't be, but probably 12 cases. It's it's 12 cases to a, to a, to a box. The 12 UPS. bottles to a case. Yeah. So 12 cases. Sure. Uh, that would be up to you if you get approved. Mm -hmm. I would say also, to keep your neighbors happy, you might want yes, to ma do that yes, until they realize you're not running a Steve. ABC yes. store out of your house. Yes, <laughs> uh, any other uh, questions from the board? Uh, okay, uh, the, the one question that I had, which I think is Oh, the additional question that I, that I have is uh, I was concerned about the length of time that it would take uh, to go from your barrel down to your bottling and I think you shared that once you break the seal it is you know you have an incentive to hurry up and I'll bottle done in a day. Yes. yes sir. okay and then that's just it then and, and away it goes and then after that you're sitting home waiting for the phone calls or I'll be making calls well, well, I understand. Yes, you, you will yes, be running your business model. Yes, sir. Okay. And the neighbors should not have be affected by that, especially one barrel yes, uh, and like that. And now, uh, you are, if you wound up getting more than one barrel, is there, I guess, you, I, I'm concerned about flammability. Okay, mm -hmm. you may have heard me talk about that. If you got one barrel, uh, that, that's one thing, but if you've got multiple barrels and you're storing it in your garage and stuff like that, how do you get, how, what is your plan to get the single barrel, because I think a barrel is 55 gallons or 50 53. gallons, 53 or gallons, yeah, do you roll that off with a dolly? Or I would have uh, pretty much what you load and unload a four-wheeler with. Yes, and that's that, that little ramp or whatever, yes, sir. pull it and go down roll with it. Down into the, the garage. Yeah. Then I've seen them rolled on television, so if you drop it, you don't have to worry about yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, they kick them down the road. All right. Well, Mr. Pate, I appreciate your time, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions from the board? No questions. Comments from the public? Anybody here or any emails? Comments from the building department? Comments from the planning department? There being no further comments, this appeal is presented mm. to the board for its <clears throat> ruling. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll. Charles Taylor. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of problem with administrative offices, but this to me, it still sounds like a semi-manufacturing. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to vote no. Uh, Susanna Cecilia? Um, I will say with, um, I guess, um, trying to look for the correct word, I guess, conditions, yeah, that it just stays within the one barrel, I will, I will approve just for that. I say I've got another two to three months worth of getting a uh, register label approval abc all that stuff um to go otherwise i would rent out somewhere but uh, it's not feasible as far as it's a hardship i guess you would say because i can't afford a barrel everything else that goes with starting a business on top of just getting applications done to be able to start it so and that's the reason why i'm 
condition into life, in my personal opinion, to one. And I'll say, I mean, I don't know that I can put that restriction, you know. But yeah, Chip, can we? I'm just, I'm just saying it. If he, he, be, if he to, becomes more. He would have to change his motion to, or whoever made the motion would have to change their motion. Yes. Or add the amendment to it. Okay. okay. Thank that's you. That's what you want to do? Yeah, that's what I would like to do. Under those conditions. If he grows, then you should be making enough money to move somewhere else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will you restate the motion? Is the nature restate of the, the business motion. is a little concerning, if you understand. The nature of the business can like be a little to concerning to your neighbors. You know? Yes. We want to put a stipulation. Mm. What's the motion then? So the motion is uh, to approve conditioned only one, on only one barrel at a time. Okay. One barrel on the property at a time. Okay. Understood. Okay. And then does that affect Charles's? I guess we're voting. Yeah, yeah, we need to. Both, I'm, sure, I'm assuming it's both the same. So. It could no, be. I'd ask him. All right. Um, I guess we need to restate the motion. We'll have a motion to approve. Motion to approve. To approve with the condition of one barrel. At a time. At a okay. Time. And do I have a second? With the new motion. Well, still second. Okay. Um, <clears throat> please call the roll again with the new. Charles motion. Taylor? Still no. Susanna Cecina? I'm going to say yes. You With that out? condition. No. Stephen mm -hmm. Thomas? I'm no. Lane Dean? Yes. And you have to have four favorable votes, so you did not get that from us. But we wish you well. Thank you. Yes. Please call the next case. Shall we should be on number 10. Application to fill a time and land call for, uh, for the following variances in order to structure the garage. Uh, 430 Sherman Street Southeast, probably located in the R38 single family historical residential zoning district. Uh, first one is a 30 foot setback variance from section 2510.2D of the zoning ordinance. Uh, two is two. 2.4 foot side yard variance from section 2510.10.2e of the zoning ordinance. And it's coming. Uh, if you'll come forward and tell us your name and your address and what you would like us to do. My name is Lynn Coleman. I reside at 1214 Derby Lane, Southwest Decatur. Um, we have purchased a home in the historic district of New Albany at 430 Sherman Street. Uh, the house was in a uh, deplorable condition. It actually, as we started uh, some work on it, it was condemned by the city. And so we have gone through the process of uh, demolishing part of the home, rebuilding, going through the historic committee, uh, community development, building department, and have started to rebuild the home. And so uh, we had put, because the house was uh, unsafe, we put the garage on the, the back burner. Um, but what we're wanting to do, because there is no driveway uh, to, onto the property, there's no uh, outbuilding, there's no garage, it's only on-street parking just directly in front of the house, uh, we wanted to um, build a garage in the rear of the, the home. Uh, it had a, a retaining wall that had to be demolished in order to get equipment and that kind of stuff in. Uh, we'll be rebuilding that as it was um, with the exception hopefully of uh, the garage. Uh, the house itself as it stands is already uh, in excess of the setback boundaries to the site limits and so what we were proposing was just to build the garage you know, directly behind the house not you know uh, any further but accessing it from the alley. Uh, comments from the public can be emailed to bozaquestions at decatur-al.gov. I'm trying to hang up. Oh. Phone acting up. Sorry about that. And you do realize if you were to get approval from us, you would still have to go through the historic oh, yes. commission yes. for your designs and your plans. Yes. We would simply be granting you the right. variances. I need your approval in order to have them blessed right. as well. Are there any other comments or questions from the, the board?
Are there other garages and the back of houses along that street already that are almost to the alley? Or? There are. Well, I thought we had had one, a case like that a year or two ago. So. Yeah, there are <clears throat> anywhere from a single outbuilding to a two-car garage to a three-car garage with a garage apartment to um, one-car access with an extension of a building. Uh, you know, there's a variety okay. of. Any other questions from the board? Comments from the public? Nothing. Comments from the building department. Comments from the planning department. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Yes. Do you Yes. 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 Is this the yellow house? Yes, it is. It almost looks like a saloon. Yes. <laughs> that's Wait a minute, let me change it. <laughs> no, it's a, it, that's what it looks like uh, the storefront of a yeah, saloon. It does. It's a pretty house. It has potential. It does. Thank you. Please call the next case. Case 11 application fields aim match for Section 2510.82H of the zoning ordinance in order to construct the new residence at 2025 Lancelot Drive Southwest uh, Hopkins Farm Subdivision province in the AG Wood Zoning District. Okay. Before she started. Okay. Before he started. All right. We're going to wait just a second to Susanna comes back. Uh, in the meantime, comments from the public can be sent to Boza Questions at Decatur al.gov. I just want to take an empty chair somewhere. I guess um, we could go ahead, just now you have to have four favorable votes. So right now there's only four of us sitting here, so you can wait till Ms. Salcedo comes back and have five. Surely I can sell four of right? them. Okay, or you can, <laughs> is that all right, Chip? It's just a hot variance. Okay. I think she's done. Okay. I don't know if we even dropped it too much, but it, hang on just a second. Okay, I got the finger, so let's wait. State your name and your address and what it is you would like us to do for you. <laughs> name is Zane Maddox, uh, 2910 Asheville Drive right there. My wife and I are looking to uh, get an application building permit and a variance to build on three and a half acres that we own down the road at 2025 Lancelot. Uh, we were told we needed a six to eight foot height variance. Um, we are approximately 140, 150 foot to the property line and then their house is actually another 40 foot so we're out by ourselves in the pasture uh, roughly 190 feet from the nearest house. No plans to subdivide those three and a half acres? 
Questions from the board? This time I do not. For it's right forward. Mm -hmm. So your house is going to be roughly 41 to 43 feet tall? Yes, sir. Steep roof. 12, I think. 12, 12. Mm -hmm. Similar to other houses. Similar. Sure. I'm talking about that seems to be the popular popular plan yes, these days is the, the taller roofs. Uh, do we have any comments from the public? We're good. Yep. Any, any other questions from the board? Comments from the building department? No comments. comments from the planning department? There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Is there a motion? I would like to make them a, a suggestion. Rather than saying six to eight feet, that doesn't work. I would say eight feet. Make sure you cover it because you can't do a variable okay. variance. Okay. <laughs> do we need him to change his application or do we state that in our Just in motion? the motion say I would uh, move to allow an eight foot high barrier okay. rather than six to eight. Was it six foot eight or in the six petition? Six to eight. Six to eight, eight, six to eight from base so plate to top. We didn't John didn't make the determination whether it was He just told me six to eight feet. Asked for a six to eight foot variance. So that's what I did. Okay. <laughs> okay. I thought it was six feet eight inches. That's, that's actually what I thought because John would scale those things out. Just to not have a scale. You got a drawing right there. Yeah. Right. Madam Chair. That's an inside baseball thing. I need to ask for 10 to make sure I get covered. <laughs> the eight is good. No, that's fine. Six, six, eight. We eight. advertise eight. Eight. We'd have to re-advertise and you would have to come back if you want 10. Madam Chair, I offer a motion to approve uh, Mr. Maddox's uh, application for an eight-foot uh, variance, height variance. Do we have a second? Second. I second. Oh, go ahead. I second the motion. Please call the roll. Thank you, Al. Yay. Stephen Thompson. Yes. Wayne Dean? Yes. Charles Taylor? Yes. Savannah Susan? Yes. You've been approved? Don't build 10, though. Huh? Don't build 10. Well, they built 10, y'all. Yeah, don't go eight and a half either. Thank you. Please call the next case. Application to fill Lamar advertising for a height variance from section 25 3 of the zoning ordinance to raise the height of the off premise sign to 40 feet thereabouts. Located at 423 Bellman Road, Southwest. I was located in the M1A zoning. State your name and address and what you would like us to do. Rod Bayless, 3440 South Chapel Hill Road, Decatur, uh, Alabama. So as opposed to uh, relocation or seeking just compensation for the removal of uh, Lamar's billboard located at Highway 20 at Appleline Farms, uh, we just ask that we be allowed to raise our current location that's just a little west of Cracker Barrel there, uh, 10 feet, 30 feet. So we'd be raising it to uh, 40. And we propose that this could be done actually for less than the 29,500 that has been, um, I guess you could call it allocated uh, to us through the relocation assistance program. So we could do that. And it, it, if that didn't happen, we could. So we have two options. One of them is to relocate. The other is to actually ask for just compensation. And we don't want to do either one of those. Really. We don't want to build anything else. We just like to raise the one we have. Okay. Uh, mm. Comments from the public can be emailed to bozaquestions at decatur-al.gov. Um, you sent us some pictures. And at the height it is now, it's almost useless. You can read the word dentures, and that's it. Any other questions from the, the board? No question. No question. Comments from the building department? No Comments from the planning department? The only thing I'm curious about, is it a digital or static? It's static. static. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll probably have a few more seconds on our public. Okay. 
until he gives us the okay on public comments. I wanted Eric to get up to the presentation. Try to get him to. <laughs> I was at St. Simons Island last week, and uh, all their billboards are about two and a half to three feet tall. So. Monument signs. Well, they were about like that, really. The big hotel sign. You almost couldn't see it. So. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no comments from the public. So. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Do we have a motion? Madam oh. Chair, I offer a motion for the, uh, to approve uh, Lamar advertising requests to raise their billboard uh, to 40 feet. I, I second. second the motion. Good. Please call the roll. Stephen Thompson. Yes. Lane Dean. Yes. Carl Taylor. Yes. Susanna Yes. You are out. Yes. And approved. Thank you. Thank you. Please call the next case. All right, application to fill administrative decision by Dale Seaver for uh, from section 2518 of the zoning ordinance to place manufacturing home at uh, 1114 Woodall Road, Southwest Properties, located in a AG1 zoning district. Please state your name and address and what you would like us to do. I live at 2016 Shady Grove Lane, Decatur, Alabama. <coughs> I own a piece of property at 1114 Woodall Road, Decatur. There was an older home on there that was condemned and I had it removed. I'd like to sell the lot. Uh, I've had some interest in the lot if it could be approved for a mobile home which I know is in the city limits and that requires a variance. <coughs> There's several mobile homes in that area, including one next door. And um, I'd, like, I'd like to see if I could get a variance for a mobile home. Just a curious request, are you cutting corner to that uh, gas station next to Gordon? Are you in that area? Or am it's I in that area. In that uh, area. The gas station is down on the corner. Down the right. house is actually, if you're going north on Woodall Road, it's the last block before you get to Highway 24. On the right. On the right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I know. I know what that is. Mm -hmm. It's thank about you. 100 yards, maybe 200 yards down to the store. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Questions or comments from the public can be emailed to Boza Questions at Decatur-AL.gov. Have questions or comments from the board. Now the other mobile mobile homes, they're either grandfathered, is that right, or I, I, they're I, not in the city? I, I don't know actually, I, I figured they were probably grandfathered in. Okay. Is the house that is across next to the gas station manufacturer as well, do you, can you recall? Across from? From you? I <coughs> uh, don't think that's manufacturer. No, okay. The one next door is? Uh, I believe the one next door next to it door. is, and okay. the one across the street is. The general rule of those manufactured homes, if there's one, if they were there before they annexed into the city, they're allowed to continue that use so long as they don't remove the mobile home for longer than a year. After mm -hmm. that, it loses its grandfather status. So mm -hmm. most times what will happen is somebody may take one out and put a new one in, but it's basically just a response and that keeps the grandfather status right. yeah okay. they, they're under that grandfather status but if they ever discontinue that use <coughs> mobile home manufacturing <coughs> is there then it's it it's so this way some of them have it. lots out there still have trailers mainly because they haven't moved in 40 years you know or what have you gotcha thank you mr seabrun the house that you had on this lot uh, before you <coughs> removed it, was it a uh, was it a mobile home? No, or it, it was a regular. It was, it was a regular house, yes. but you but it was in bad shape. In bad repair. Yes. Understood. Thank you. I think you mentioned before that. You feel there's a hardship, a 
because of the other mobile homes around. It's going to be hard to sell to anyone to build a new home on. Uh, you know, it's just not the wealthy neighborhood. Understood. Any other questions or comments from the board? Any comments from the public? Okay. Comments from the building department? Small a consideration that if we do allow for the mobile home to go in this location, that we follow the RMA's guidelines. Which you know, may not be very familiar with those. When we read those out, we get to the RMA. So it says each manufactured home shall be installed on its own lot. Which if y'all grant this, that will happen. It says, uh, I don't think it has a restriction in here about whether it's on a major thoroughfare or a collector it can't have access to it. But I don't know what is Woodall Road to the collector. It's a side yeah. out. Yeah, this is a lot. Of, this, this doesn't have one. There's so few cars. It says there shall be a minimum separation between structures. Or uh, on the lot about 13 feet, meaning they can't be closer than 13 feet to the structure, any other structure on the lot. It's got to have 13 foot around it. If that includes structures is left and the right of it. It needs to have be oriented so it's no closer than that. Um, of course, it's going to have that. It says, uh, it says manufactured home installed on the side shall not exceed four times its width with its length measured along the long axis. And measured on the narrowest part with the minimum of not less than 24. So basically, that's what it's saying is that you can't have one of those older, slim mobile homes pulled in from 1970s. You know, it's got to be a, most of the newer ones are 80 foot by uh, about 80 foot, 40 foot by 100 or something like that. I want to say they're, I just got one in Auburn not too long ago for my son. They're usually larger, they look nicer. Manufactured also, home versus also, a trailer. Uh, it says each manufactured home shall be blocked or anchored in compliance. It says all manufactured homes uh, shall have a permanently masonry underpin foundation which exists from the ground to the bottom of the exterior wall surroundings. Dwellings or underpinning foundations shall be brick block, uh, rock, or painted masonry of the same color. So what they're saying is they want to set that on the on the foundation. Basically, <clears throat> following these guidelines will help it. The neighborhood be a little better in care. Maybe it will improve. We don't want to just have any old mobile home drug in there. This underpinning's falling out from underneath it. It's a later model, you know, or even just a camper. That's not what you're wanting to do. That's not the development of the neighborhood that we want to go, even though it may not be a nice neighborhood now. Maybe we want to, to develop along the way. So we want to have some further restrictions mm -hmm. to help improve. That's why we did that with the RMH, which is down in Flint. There's several homes, several mobile homes there. They look like regular houses almost if you didn't see the little sticker from the state saying that it's a manufactured home on the side of it. Uh, of course, there's a lot of stick bump homes over there too because that didn't take off like it was supposed to. But uh, I ask that we adopt these regulations. Uh, I don't know how we can narrow some of these downs, maybe throw out the throw out the uh, collector like B. Maybe just to adopt a couple of things. I don't know whether y'all have these in. Y'all can get a hold of them. It's on page 21 and 22 of our. Uh, maybe adopting the underpinning part of it as a motion. All towing devices, wheels, access hitches, license plates shall be removed. So all that's got to be gone. Each manufactured home shall be blocked, anchored. All manufactured homes that have permanent step or concrete porches or decks on the outside of the doorways shall be anchored to the ground. All manufactured homes have at least a nominal pitch roof of 3 and 12. Um, and mind you that even, it's, it's not like you can just pull it in anyway without coming to us to get a 
permit to do that because we don't have to have a permit for electrical power. We also have to permit for the plumbing, the, the plumbing up. So that's something that we check as well anyway. And it'll have to go lot lines and setbacks and all of that just like yeah, I mean, the house call, would be. I don't know that his lot, uh, we'd have to figure out whether his lot would be able to fit one of these homes on there or not. That's just a consideration. <coughs> Comments for the lot. Well, the, the minimum lot is, is it 5,000 square feet? So, how big a lot is it? It's a 128 by 236. Oh. That's nearly 10 acres. It's 50 foot wide. It's at least 50, so it's 128 wide. 128 wide. So, it's 50 foot, he's got that. He'd have a front yard set back of 20 feet. He'd probably put one 20 foot back. Rear yard of 20, probably could do that. Uh, five and eight on the sides. That should be the problem. He, I have never seen a 35 foot mobile home, so I don't even know why that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> 35 foot tall. And now I've seen some of them <laughs> on the internet, that, you know, some good old boys out there. Uh, I think you could meet, the, I think you could meet these maybe aside from the collector street, because Wood All Road is a collector, maybe that's a big road. Busy road, but we could toss that one out and that he wouldn't have to meet that. So you're saying all except all except, except paragraph that. B? Yeah. Okay. You see this is a lot of it is the, the, like the all buildings uh, setback lines shall be indicated on plats and final plats, but we don't need that. So so maybe if we adopt the RMH general guidelines. Section one A C uh, F G H I J K and I and then you said I twice. Yeah, it's L. You said you said I it's twice. L. J K L. L. Excuse me, L. And then it's just two. a lowercase yeah. L. And then section two, which was the lot size and okay. setbacks. And then Saber? section three, any uses for minimum. Basically, we're not rezoning it, but we're just adopting those sections, those, okay. those requirements. So we can set motion motion to approve based off by the requirements. Based on the, the requirements. Right. Except for the ones that I took out. Mr. Seaborn. What's the age of your trailer that you want to move on the property? I'm, I'm just selling the lot. And I was actually concerned about what Mr. Sam said was, uh, you know, somebody moving a trashy trailer in there or something. But I think what he should propose would eliminate that. Okay. So, Mr. Seaver, you, you're not expecting to put the trail on there. You're just asking so mm -hmm. that if you sell somebody the lot, yes. then, mm -hmm. then the lot will have the approval to for a trailer to be set mm -hmm. on exactly. it exactly. okay now how does that follow with the ownership because we're making a well, requirement right and it goes with the property the, the variance goes with the property thank you so much so mm -hmm. when they come if someone if somebody sells a lot and then someone comes into us and says i want to put a mobile home on there now this may be years down the road and of course, the first red flag that stuff shows us, hey, that's, you can't have a mobile home. And then we'll look in the file and we'll say, hey, they got a variance. And it says they have to go by these rules before we we'll even sell the electrical hookup on you. And that is because it's in the city limits. Right. The reason why I was chasing this, I am so accustomed to property being with the county. Like when you get deeds and stuff like that. <clears throat> and I was trying to make sure that as we make this business that whoever comes in in the future that they have it and what you're sharing it is in the file within the city of decatur as long as the city of decatur has not released that annex or whatever yeah and i doubt they ever do that okay <laughs> understood and you said 1.8 c f g h i j k l is that what mm -hmm. you said yep and then section two and section and two three and three section two and three <clears throat> Okay. And that should get it down to where somebody could put something on a lot. The, the collector one is the one that would throw it out. 
because that's a collector and they wouldn't allow us to do that. Okay. So, the whole okay. thing there is going to, they got to take that section. Since you have all the G's and T's, you can make the motion. Yeah, yeah that's what I was trying to be. Somebody's writing, go ahead and write it down. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, comments you got a from you got two tail? Tail got it. Go to tail. Uh -oh. Comments from the planning department. Mr. Seymour, can you give me just a description, like how far back from the road you think that the Oklahoma might be situated, kind of what's around it. Are there tree lines around? Are there any woodpeckers around? What? On the north side is a solid tree line. Okay. On the east side is a solid tree line. That's on the back. Mm -hmm. And then next door is a, a fence yard all the way back. I see. And the, road. the house that was there, <coughs> 100 feet back. Like, it's ways. Yeah, it's like 100 feet back from the road. I thought that's what I'd seen on the GI. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments from the board? No questions. There being no further comments, this appeal is presented to the board for its ruling. Do I have a motion? Motion to uh, approve the uh, request contingent on the all the requirements of section 25-10.4 with the exception of uh, paragraph 1 b d and e be met do i have a second i second the motion please call the roll landing yes charles taylor yes Suzanne yes. Yes. Stephen Thompson. yes we have been approved could I ask one question? If someone wanted to build a home on there, is there a restriction on size? Uh, no. The, minimum size? The, there's there's uh, the minimum size of the building code that you can build a house and not tiny houses yeah. because tiny houses are not houses. They are basically sheds. But <laughs> <laughs> they got a tough piece of They got a tough piece of that would have to meet the minimum interior requirements. There's certain room sizes you've got to meet. Certain bedroom sizes, I think 70 square feet, I think 120 square feet for a living room size. The bathroom's got to be so many square feet, I forget what it is. Can you tell me where I find all that? It's in the International Residential Code, the 2009 International Residential Code. And you, we've talked about it because we have a lot of people who want to do tiny homes, mm -hmm. but it depends on what their idea of a tiny home is. Tiny homes sometimes are ones that are somebody's built on a trailer. And sometimes oh, yeah. some people got from the, that's a shed on skids and they just shove it in there. That's not gonna pass the building. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Please call the next case. Last case. I had different it's numbers than what y'all did. They switched it all around. 10-2C in order to construct a front porch at 1120 Ninth Avenue, South Beach, probably located in Park Police Please state your name and your address and what you would like us to do. Uh, my name is Michael Petty. I live at 1119 8th Avenue, South East. Uh, actually, I'm here for a variance for a personal friend of mine, Tony Rodriguez, who lives at 1120 Ninth Avenue, South East. Uh, we had submitted plans for an addition to the back side of the home and the front porch to the front side of the home. Uh, the porch on the front side of the home, information from the building department is that it was going to require a variance. Uh, had a survey conducted, uh, submitted to the, the building department, and I believe it will be within uh, the range. I think it's a 31 foot. So you seen this, that, you, know, you and maybe Randy got together and figured out that's correct. I, this is the survey that, that we had uh, completed. I brought it and gave it to Randy. Okay, so 12, 12 is a solid 12. Right, that's what they told us to ask for in regards okay. to that with a 10 12 foot variance. The front porch will be within inside that 12 feet. They said. But they just, they just wanted to know. That we had to get the survey to know exactly where the line was. Yeah, that's what I meant. Just to know exactly. Right. So yes. Sir. That that's correct. That is correct. Yes. Sir. Questions from the board? 
So this porch will extend out 12 feet? It, it will be within the, on the back side of the 12 feet. They said after the 12 feet to make sure that we had the area covered. You know the dimensions of that front porch yet? Uh, the front porch is actually going to be 12 wide by 8 deep. 12 wide, 8 deep? Okay. Yes. Eight. Will it be roofed? Yes, sir, it will be. Okay. So the front porch is eight foot deep? Yes, sir, that's correct. 12 feet wide, eight foot deep. Okay, so the house is sitting at the shortest side at 33 feet. So if it's eight, it's coming out eight feet from the front edge of the house? That's correct, from the foundation, come out eight feet. Okay, so you really don't need the six foot front yard variance instead of the 12. I'm going by what the building part told what we need to ask for. Yeah, that's, 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 what, I was, that's what I was confused over. Right. Because if you go 12, if you're asking for 12, then you can build it. 16 feet. 16 feet. Because there's another three. <clears throat> you're sitting three foot behind the 30 foot setback. So that's why I was wondering. I might take your word for it because I really truly, I don't, I, I didn't know that when we went there, they said we had to have the survey. We got the survey and then they said ask for the 12 foot variance to make sure that we were covered in regards to what we wanted to do for the porch. Uh, that's, that's what we submitted to the building department and to the to the board for approval on the setback. Talk to Randy. Right? That's correct, yes sir. He's the building department, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, comments from the public can be directed to Boza questions at decatur-al.gov for the record. Any other questions from the board? Mm -hmm. So according to the survey, according six foot is all we need? Is, if he's going eight foot from the front of the house, the most he would need right. is six feet to get an eight foot out in front of the house with the, with the deck. You wouldn't need 12. You just need, you just need because you're already sitting three foot five or three foot three at the shortest side. It's three, 34, 24 at the other side. So it's not totally square. So really you just need if it's going to be eight foot, if it's going to be larger than eight foot, you might need more. Let's say seven. The seven plans are getting clear. The plans are drawn for an eight foot, eight, eight foot front porch. Let's see Twelve foot wide, eight foot deep. Let's see your plan. Twelve wide and eight deep. That way I can. That was the men in the building department. Yeah, I haven't seen those. Randy's been there. I'd rather do it in the building. Yeah, that's what Mm -hmm. could be. So it's most even to get the footer in. He really would only need a seven foot variance. And that'd give him a little play for an overhang in the, in the footer. I think I think Randy and they were just basing that that they didn't have the survey when they first did this. When they first came in they didn't right, have right. So he didn't know what it was. He just wanted them to get the application in and say 12. So we could have this So he could get it on, yeah, so we could get on the meeting. But if it's only eight foot, then he only needs about seven. So would be safe in saying seven? Is that's not You'd be safe in saying seven. You would definitely because he's got, he's got three to play with and eight. So three and eight. He'd be right. seven more feet in. Yeah. That'd be 10. That'd be plenty. Even for a fudge factor. With a fudge factor. And that's just me eyeballing the height, you know. Well, I don't know. I'm sitting down with Randy trying to figure out whatever's in his head. Yeah. But that would require us to change the paperwork. No, no. No, you no, can't go you more. You can always give less, but you can't give no more. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. That's the reason my ass asked for the 12 foot. Right. <clears throat> always be over and not under. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. You have any uh, comments from the public? No. Comments from the building department? No comments. Comments from the planning department? No. Any more <coughs> questions or comments from the board? Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I have a motion that uh, the application from Mr. Rodriguez uh, for a variance be approved with a 10-foot 
uh, setback bears to the front yard. Seven. 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 Okay. He'll get ten. Oh, okay. He's got three. He's got three already. Mm -hmm. Okay. So going to give him seven and give him five. Okay, they cut him down to seven. Okay. <laughs> Madam Chair, off of him, that it is seven feet then. Do yeah. I have a second? So there's no way giving him seven is going to hurt what he has designed. No, he'll have that plus two. Okay. Okay. That, you heard that? Yeah. I'm going to go to. <laughs> yes. You, you, you saw it. Right. Do I have anyways. You know my side. I can tell that. Do I have a second? Second. Please call the roll. Charles Taylor? Yes. Is that some Yes. Do you allow Steve Thomas? Yes. Yes. That's not big enough. Go see Bob. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other business to discuss? Yes. Really? Well, I'm going to make a proposal. We move these board meetings from here at City Hall. To turn our servos during the duration of this COVID nonsense. I agree. It's a larger facility. We can fit more people in. And it's available because the senior center is not open because of the COVID, the COVID crisis. It's a good idea. I can try to get that worked out the next month of people if y'all are in agreement. Yeah, I'm good. Because we've run into a problem downstairs with the, they don't like the guards checking folks in. You know, there's not enough room. Uh, in the council chambers, especially if we have a large agenda like this. And until this crisis is over, we, we need a, a place we can have folks to spread out. So we say permanently we're moving our stuff. Well, I mean, this crisis is like lasting that forever. That doesn't require and ever. a motion or anything. Though. I'm being sarcastic, Bob. You know, just, I'm tired of it. Well, I don't think we'll have to have video because it's not going to be enough room for people to show up. Yeah, yeah. And we did have some of that when we did one Decatur meetings out there. Right. So yeah. I know there's a pretty good audio video yeah, set up out there. It's a pretty good room. But they don't, I don't think we'll have to stream it as long as the place is big enough for the For the public Social distancing. Do we have to vote? Do we have to tell us to show up? Let me work it out. Okay. I mean, I don't think necessarily we have to vote on it. I don't think so. But no, y'all didn't, didn't vote to move up here. So yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I'm just going to make that. See so what y'all thought. ready to go. Question for you. Clear a path to the elevator. You, you shared <laughs> that the Turner Serial <laughs> Center is closed right now. If we move there, how will, are you... Will you be responsible for ensuring that the climate controls and things like that are in place? Because sometimes some of the people may come in and some of them may not do well when they get overly hot or something like that. Well, I'll give you one better. My wife's over to the centers for parking rates. So I can get invited anyway. Okay, good. Oh. Well, I just make sure. Well, hang on. We have to do a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Susanna. <laughs> I'll motion to yeah, she's, she said yes. I'll say aye. Uh, aye. Right. Are we through live streaming yes. so I can make my comment? Yes. Um, that security downstairs, I set off the buzzer every single time. Well, but he waves me through every single time. I mean, I could.